spamming regen on their cores now, and uh -huh. especially when you have an IO who is going to be getting a headdress and you know giving you essentially infinite regen. The more stats you have, the better. You know, you don't need those tangos really themselves. Water runes are getting picked up here by both of the Spirit Brothers. Again, fairly static. I don't think we're going to be seeing any movement until an action rune comes out or until we start seeing uh, those level sixes come out. But a little bit of tagging here between Insania and Taiga. If you've been watching on Twitter, they've been having a lot of fun poking at each other. I believe there was a, a picture of Insania pointing to... Um, I think it was something to the effect of, like, target Taiga. Welcome back, but I think it looked like a J. So, you know, maybe his evil twin, Jaiga. Yeah, they were, they were giving each other shit in the, in the lobby, too. But you uh, love seeing it, though, right? The, uh, yeah, talking about the colors. It's like, oh, Taiga's always in that bottom position on the team. That brown, that orange color. That's such a weird thing to tease okay. each other. <laughs> Dude, it is a thing with those players, <laughs> though. It's like, you never want to be the bottom guy. Yeah. Taiga, though, taking a lot of damage. He's a lot of but he is going to be the first blood. <laughs> I feel like that's a big reason that they picked up Troll, just that ability to dominate the lane. You see that there's a snap fire, and you know that with Troll plus Lion, you have enough slow and nuke that you can always kill the snap fire on the side of the lane. Uh, even if, like, some off player gets picked, but Troll's not necessarily very good against it. Yeah, because with the Dragon Knight, generally speaking, you're not going to see a lot of aggression come out against him because it's very tanky, but he, uh... The Snapfire. Misha gets clicked down here by Boxy. Back off of Yuragi. But yeah, now the, the Snapfire, you know, you have the cookie hop, and that's about it. And it's it's not a lot of distance that puts between you and the enemy when you use it. And a lot of times it's used to be an initiating if you're going to go forward, so. Yep, Snapfire, if you if you pull the line back as a five and you force Snapfire to play in the jungle against you, then the carry can just run over and with most supports you can kill snap that's like the easiest way to punish her if you put her with a plus one she's really strong because of the cookie and because of minus armor if she's on her own she's killable rocky having to pop that refraction as i jump sports in you again it's these two they're just poking away at each other so i know that tiger's on his way over to this mid lane nick is sitting a little liar cookie up we'll get the sign of pretend bzm i got big off for this though in fact he will as so down he goes here in the mid lane. So BCM did have eight stick charges, but with three heroes mid, it's still it's nice to save him like that. Oh, oh my side. god, yeah. He just popped. Uh, okay. Game, Money changes hands. Yeah, that's a solid tip when your five is just solo killing the offlaner. I suppose that's the problem with buying no regen when you have a wisp. <laughs> when your wisp like, is not there. When the wisp is not the there, is yeah. The, I mean, that was very smart, right, on the side of... I need to recognize that Boxy's not here, so let's start stacking up that Shadow Poison. Yeah. Start giving them the clicks. I think with the nurse to DK's passive, you probably can actually kill him in this lane. Even if he hits level 5, like, there is always kill threat on him. It's not exactly how it used to be. It's really just a stunner. He's, oh, he He's wants in. this. He uses those remnants. <laughs> goes a little bit further, gets the slide He's off. Another. This cracks me up because we call this the NA special usually when you use all of your remnants in some mid lane when you hit six to get the kill. <laughs> Surprised that nobody made their way over, but I guess they just teleported, right? So I, I don't even think there's any saving him. It, it would just be like a return kill, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, would be would be decent, but it, it's Ember. Like, if he has Flame Guard up, it's really difficult to kill him, even if you TP in there. Wow. He's low HP. So you have to right click him to death, which. Hard to do at this point. Mickey's coming up top. Zoom in here. Mickey's here. He wants to kill off Misha. Gonna go right into the trees. Drag back. That kill crash up one more hit. Mickey will hunt. The kill off Misha. Tokens are coming out though. Taiga making his way over. Pabizia made his way to the top lane. The cookie on back. We're on to Zai. They'll take down Zai. They want Mickey too. Can they get there in time though? He's used up a lot of that mana. BZM. He wants this kill. It's just going to chase after them. It's a slow chase. He's taking too much tower damage. Taiga throwing out the scatter blast will connect over onto two and slow them down. But BZM, he's sitting very, very low right now, does not have any more region, so he is going to have to back off. Meanwhile, Batu and Amar, they're having a good time. They're high-fiving each other. Nice quiet lane gentlemen's agreement. 
can't really kill each other at this point. Yeah, so, you know, I said that with the Dragon's Blood passive being nerfed, you can definitely kill a mark here, but he actually is going for a Helm of Iron Ruler, which when DK was being picked up as a hero, this wasn't the build. So I feel like if you're going Armlet DK, maybe it does actually put him back to that state of like being unkillable, because it, it is a lot of armor in region. Again, another move here. BZM joining in, has his eyes on Zai. Big Melt Strike coming out, needs a little bit more damage. Zai will die. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Even a master falters. I like that BZM stayed in the area there. That's one of the nicest things that a mid laner can do is just like eat off map and you know you gank a lane and then you kill it again and then all of a sudden you have this hero that has no TP scroll. So I have 24 seconds. He's gonna have to walk back to lane. That is massively gonna delay his level six on Pangolier. That's an important, really important timing this game. That definitely doesn't feel good whenever you have to do the walk shame back to lane. Yeah, especially right before your most important timing, which is level six. Sitting up here, devil damage just gets snapped up by Insania as they find a kill on Taiga over the bottom rune spot. Nick Gay, though, is getting chased down. Lots of damage over to BZM. They have to watch out. Ma 2 in the vicinity, making his way over. Throws out the slow with the axes. BZM turns back around. It's just gonna sidestep because in comes Boxy. And this is looking like Misha's gonna have to pay for this here. Minion's bottom tower faces a stiff win. Dude, that is a classic Ma 2. Just like, he's just mid for he some reason. You're up. like, what the hell is the troll carry doing here? No one expects the position left to get But it's such a good rotation because there's also a catapult alive here. So pairing these, these heroes up, it means that OG has to respond with a bunch of heroes just sitting mid. They get a lot of chip damage, they get a kill. They have to TP in the Shadow Demon to fill the bottle. Yeah, amazing rotation from Liquid. That was, that was good stuff. You really rarely see the carry rotate like that. I think the only time you usually see a carry rotate like that is Eternal Envy. He just shows up randomly. Yeah, honestly. But that's just EE Dota. And, and Matsu. Like, it, those, yeah, are, those are the two that those come are the two. Dyer's Matsu is really good at identifying when he so needs to be the hero that's pressuring towers. And, like, sure, you lose your tower to a DK, but clearly in this game, he has just identified that, okay, I'm the only tower damage. I have two cores, and a Storm Spirit. So if I'm not hitting towers, even though I really like to farm, we're not gonna get any tower, so I have to sack my game a bit and do that. All right, we get the drag back immediately, though. Ember running away. Tyga is left behind. He should try whatever he can to try to help out a little bit. They're gonna run that full kill. gonna kill on Insania. Yes, they can. But the fall kill is really nice. Old spike. They're gonna get the kill on Tyga. The rolling sun is running on through, though. Kill BZM. And the protector stack. Yes, he's gonna get us a bait release. Mars here, though. Mark of the challenge. It gets a lot of those last hits. Very tanky. My boy's got a full arm little already. He's a big boy, the Samara, the friendo. Zai joining in. Boxy give it the click. Samara's here. He is up the very high with just an arm. <laughs> that is one issue. He got some cookies to put some pep in his step, right? That disarm is such a pain in the ass this game. It's always a pain in the ass. Yeah, but the. I the worst like... is when that when Pango was mid and he would just disarm you. Like, how is that? How's that allowed? Yeah, it's it's one of those things that like turns every matchup. I, I know that Pango does fairly well versus TA mid, and uh, as we can you know see in this game in the safe lane, Dusty still as well, just because you can disarm her. Mm -hmm. So it's like she's not getting she melt strikes you, gets that minus armor, and then all of a sudden she's not getting any extra hits on you. Cats are being taken though by Yoragi as well. So, uh, looking pretty nice in terms of net worth. A little bit behind here for Yoragi, not where you want to be as the position one, but not too far behind as pretty much neck and neck with the Storm Spirit and the DK. I suppose another argument behind Troll as a hero in this game, even though, uh, you know, as we talked about, the SD is a decent counter because of the kiting potential, mm -hmm. is that. I don't know if you've ever played TA versus Troll, but it, it is one of the more frustrating matchups. He just presses ult on you, you can melt strike him as much as you want, but he's just gonna permur you and be full HP, and he'll kill you through as many refraction charges as you want to spam. Like you're just never surviving a troll, and then you also have that missed chance. So it, it, it is a really good matchup, Troll versus TA. And the one v one, but like when you look at what they have on board on the side of OG, it is like the the one problem with troll is that if you can control him in any way. If you can disrupt him, if you can halberd him, like he just becomes kind of, I won't say useless, because not useless, but his ulti just doesn't feel good. In, in the games that he looks bad, he looks dog shit. Like that's, that's, how, that's how Troll works as a yeah. hero. And uh, in the games that he looks good, like he, look, 
it's like literally the best carry in the game. That it's just one to a hundred, you know. Hmm. Well, they went with the smoke play over to the triangle and dropped some vision, but haven't quite found a target yet. Although I would say BZM, perhaps they'd like to make some moves on him, but they'd have to dive a little bit. I don't think they're quite ready for it. Siragi, again, this is a nice thing about TA, does have those psionics blades that are going to be able to spill over and uh, just allow him to farm faster. Yeah, and Matu, to kind of keep up with that farming pace, is naturally going to come out of the TA. He's getting Battle Fury. <laughs> And, Get close uh, to it too. I think it's it's the right play. You know, it's so interesting because you'd think like some guy that's getting a battle fury obviously wants to farm, right? But he's been the one that's pressuring towers. Oh. Insania is just getting soul killed. <laughs> uh, the the tip comes out. <laughs> that's gonna oh, be good. Of, uh, rivalry, I would say. The dragon bat over onto Amar. He's gonna take a couple heroes to try to get this kill though. Toggling quite well, zipping forward again. A couple more clicks. They're all like thunder comes in, and it's gonna be Boxy who actually gets the final hit. Picking up forward, they're a little bit off the mark now. And like we said, Nisa is just able to go throw it in that little bubble and they disengage just like that. Zai jumping in though, Misha, Taiga nearby, doesn't have that cookie up for another couple seconds. He's gonna try to slow them down just a little bit, but they'll find the kill of Boxy thanks to the blue of the Misha will know they'll find their another kill of Taiga and Zai gets himself a double kill. Interesting call from Matu to chase there, like knowing the BCM is obviously in the area and that you're low HP, he just trusted his IO to keep him alive. And unfortunately, the, he did the math a little bit wrong where he probably got overkilled by like 50 damage there or something like that from the the Ember uh, Slight of Fist. But it's it's interesting that Matu's like, oh, they, you know, they used everything. I'm, I'm going to run in and BCM's like, all right, freebie. I'll take that enemy carry for free. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Don't mind if I scoot yeah. we do. Don't mind if I do. Only about a 1k net worth lead going over to the side of OG right now. Currently, TA has overtaken the, uh, the net worth by just like 800 gold. Not crazy amounts, but that death on the troll definitely uh, put him a little bit behind here. Yeah, Yuragi is not getting pressured at all. And... and on Liquid, there's a troll that's running at all of the towers, running at free team fight, trying to farm a Battle Fury and dying. So definitely if you're OG, you're you're cool with this. This game feels good. Like you know that you've been 4v5ing the entire game and your TA is just flash farming and uh, she's gonna hit that desolator and all of a sudden become significantly stronger and maybe that show up to a fight. Instead of a 4v5, you got a 5v5. It's not gonna look so good for, for Liquid. I mean, it's not that bad. Like, if you look at the net worth right now, Troll's already caught up. Like, it's not that huge of a difference. The, uh, the net worth is not, but it's more its more the so the, its more so the fact that, like, you're 4v5-ing the entire game and still keeping up on OG. Yeah, you definitely... You always want to be ahead if possible. You don't want to just be breaking even. Yeah. Old Tumby does have his, uh, his Battle Fury now, though, so... That means he's going to be speeding up on the farm as well. Mm -hmm. He the, the item timing that I think Matumbo wants to play for is probably like uh, Battle of Fury, Yasha, BKB, and then they're really strong to take a fight. And then I think every every item after that is pretty important. The fights that he showed up to so far have been kind of out of like necessity or convenience. Like they're just near, they're just happening. Uh, or like he wants to pressure a tower, but it's not really been around any item timing in particular. Blank Dagger picked up on a bar now. He's going to be able to help in jump into these fights and initiate. Smoke play coming out from OG. They know exactly where they are. Make their way over. They have their own smoke over on the side of Lake Winters. They're going back out. Say now, left behind BCM. Walking right in front. Misha just going to casually throw a little bit of a board here from Amar, but it was a bait. They just went back in with the rolling thunder. Nice disruption, though, buying them a little bit more time. Nice speech, but it's not enough. As Amar does eventually melt here, and Tatu just starts wailing away on everyone. Holding into the place of the same coming out from the gate of Mike and Misha. As now they'll throw the long range down. Fire kisses and Mickey taking a lot of damage. Jiragi joining back. But Zai, they want this kill on the Pango. They got to move a little bit faster. The whole the place is scattered blast. Just a little bit more damage. Cookie up forward. And down we'll go the Pangolier. Uh, so that was a literal one for one, I'm pretty sure. That was a five in an off lane for a five in an off lane. Ooh, uh, three low coming in hot here. The game needs some help. As they'll try to make plays over to Yoragi, they found themselves Taiga instead. Purge is in the back room right now going, my stocks are going up. 
He paid them. Did he? He paid and is saved that, Is that it? Is that he, the uh, master way to uh, to advertise yourself? I think so. You can't buy that line anymore, though, I'm pretty sure. No, that's true. <laughs> that's why they're spamming it. Just to frustrate me. Just to frustrate me. Excellent. Yeah. I can get on board with that. Yeah, I'm behind that. This was a really nice team fight from Zai. I, I love that they like walk in Sania in first, and he just presses all his buttons, then he dies pathetically as a five. Like, good, that's it, you did your job. Zai counter initiates, uh, kills Amar, and then also hits the final stun onto Misha. It ends up being a one for one, but I think considering you get smoked into, and that's the reveal of the deaths on TA, you're pretty happy with that for a little bit. We just saw this fight, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, this is the same fight. <laughs> found a way to make Dragon Knight interesting in high skill. You just buy in, you just buy an armlet, and you toggle like three or four times in the fight. He ends up dying, but there's so much committed to him that see, they just wipe liquid. They just kill everybody else in the in the downtime. That's gonna open up the room with a Deso on the TA. You're doing some massive amounts of damage. You're gonna be able to get yourself an age just real easy like, especially when the enemy team was all dead. Smart. Yeah. And that's an Aegis. Immortality for Yoraki. Yeah, he is looking real scary on TA. Um getting he's getting close to the Agnum Scepter. Once he has that, we have seen what Yoragi can do with the Tiro. You'd think that this is for farming across the map, but I feel like I see him farming heroes more than I see him farming creep waves when he picks that up. It's like OG, they really up the tempo when they get this item on TA, and the Aegis basically guarantees that they're going to get to it. And I think the last time the last time we saw OG get up an Aegis on Yoragi when he was playing TA, they did this th similar thing where they just kind of farmed with it. They just used it as like, you know, you want to go on us? You're fighting into an Aegis, so we're just going to free farm the entire map because you're scared. That's the idea, is to make them play into you. Be allowed to do, or rather, um, be allowed to do. Boy, my English. Woo. Hanging out with you too much. <laughs> too many diet sodas, too yeah. Too many diet Radio's sodas. Oh, not the Jenkins the juice. Uh, no, but like, that's, that's the idea, right? Is that you want them to play into you and to just be able to do whatever you want. Like, be allowed to just free farm the map. And if they want to make any moves on it they can't otherwise they have to let you continue doing what you're doing sometimes the pressure is on with an aegis where like you know that the late game is just out of your favor and so you have to you know you have to go in so they're yule sceptering here they have another yules on taiga now they've got two yules so far which a you know, good yules game best way to deal with the troll honestly it's a very frustrating item for troll he ults you just double yules him he feels very sad Indeed. Storm Orchid as well. Popping a couple traps. See some movement coming out from the side of OG. But they want this mid tower. They're trying to find the right angle on it. Amar gonna take Draw down some of these boards, help himself to a creep. But yeah, I mean, like you said, they could just farm with this, but they can also take a mid tower on their way through. Yeah, this is another one of those like convenience plays where. It's a tier one tower. It's just easy to take. Mm -hmm. You have a catapult there too. And you know that if you just slowly poke here with your Agi, I mean, how are you going to kill an Aegis TA? And even if you do it, like, how are you going to kill him second a second exactly. yeah, with, with the team to back him up? Like, it's just, it's just impractical to defend it. So they take the freebie. Liquid doesn't defend it. I think that's the right choice. We have a Blink Dagger coming out for Taiga now. So even better positioning in a lot of these fights, because that can be a problem for the Cookie Grandma. Yeah, once you have Blink plus Shard on Snapfire, it's like she not only becomes this like support hero with you know minus armor and more risk kisses for team fights, but she's like an instant disabler, and uh, that's that's pretty nice. You know, it, it gives you the ability to like pick people off across the map. And I mean, they already have that ability with Dragon Knight, but uh, what better way is there to play Snapfire? It's like it's just such a it's just such a solid build. They are about to have their own global presence as TA does have herself in <laughs> Before we get to that point, we will end up losing Misha here at the bottom lane. As a liquid just rolls on through. 
it's it's one of the most like not flashy things, but highest impact plays that we've seen from both sides of this game, where the five position just kind of like walks in and tanks the initiation. Because, you know, you're dead for 40 seconds. I think that might have been like a, buy, a buyback death or something from the previous fight, but yeah, me so st that. still, like, you, you know, you're almost always going to have buyback as a five. Your death timer is the shortest. You can just walk in, like, press all of your spells. Uh, and then also, like, if your five is dead and the enemy team overextends, you can still fight. Like, that is not necessarily true if your Dragonite dies or if your Ember Spirit dies, for example. Like, they go for a smoke after <laughs> their five dies. Easy, I'm throwing out the whole the box is now for kisses! And Mickey's just evaporated. They want more too. Oh gee, you can see the way that liquid is immediately moving into the tree line, so trying to make some space, and they're trying to get out of there in a hurry. So it looks like OG should be able to put some pressure on this top tower. Everybody's already left the area for the most part. Foxy just hiding in the tree line. No one's gonna look for you, little ball light. OG, they are. I'm surprised that they're not going for the top tower, but it, it is an interesting call. Oh, there they go. Never mind. JK. A cast or curse? Because it is, it is pretty free. You know, you can tower. just walk in and He's start hitting it. 20 seconds left on the Aegis. They're trying to bring I mean, this is nice too, right? You take down this tower, this opens up the triangle for the side of OG. It's gonna make it more difficult for Liquid because Troll still wants to continue to just hit creeps and you're taking away the safety net. So he's gonna just have to remnant his way out of this fight and use the BKB defensively. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it's a rough time for Tiger to get caught out there. Uh, I think you probably assume that they're just using a ward right there because that's a weird place for Radiant to have a ward like in their own triangle. It's super smart to ward there because then when you leave and you know, there is this smoke that happens into your triangle like you have vision into it and exactly that happens. Uh, but Taiga, like the Aegis was just despawning so it means that OG, they have to immediately go into evacuate mode which results in BZM using his uh, first BKB charge to just escape uh, for almost nothing, for almost no cost to Liquid. It's not what you want from that first BKB. Definitely not. You want to make plays happen, you want to get some kills, and you want to get an objective. So Liquid striking at the perfect time and uh, making the, the Ember a little sad here. And old Tumby's got his BKB fully picked up here. So old Tumby, that's all I can think of whatever you say. <laughs> Sajin Yasha as well, so he's got that status resist. Unfortunately, not not so good against the Yule Scepter, but with BKB, it is. So they smoke up with this. Amar in position, Taiga as well to break any sort of smoke. So we'll walk into Matumba. Just back off, pop a trap. Yeah, that was dank positioning. And he was right next to the ward too, so Taiga knows that like he's gonna get vision of them before they see him there. Yeah, not very nice from Taiga. Oh, and no one's showing up in the lanes. You have to assume they're on their way somewhere. EKB now for the TA. I think they'll probably be looking for a fight soon. Link Dagger picked up now for the Lion, so even better positioning, better initiation, whatever it is that he needs to do for the side of Liquid. This Lion is ready for it. And now, at this point, Dyer's you're you're getting closer and closer attack. to the point of the game where the five walking in and feeding becomes less valuable. Mm -hmm. Because if Insania has a Blink Dagger, then it means that he can get off multiple rounds of spells and multiple rounds of stuns going into the late game, while heroes have a ton of damage to do in those stuns. And so you actually become a scaling hero so long as you can get in and out of the team fight. So now I think his BKB heroes can probably walk in first, and, and we're going to see a lot more uh, kind of man mode, like running in like a, a crazy, a crazy person from Matumba Man, which he was trying to do in that last fight, but unfortunately for Liquid, Top I just was there. Right place, right time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Where's the party? Gonna clear up a couple more stats here with Boxy. Everybody's just waiting very patiently now, just pushing out waves, continuing to farm. What's our next big item timing that you think we're going to see? Because we have a lot of BKBs across the board, uh, like we said, but... 
Is it just all centering around the timing of Roche right now? Uh, honestly, it's like, yeah, Roche. Roche matters. I mean, you've Storm on one, on one, one side, so like Roche is definitely going to matter for Storm. It's not, it's not the greatest on Troll because like you're just going to die and then pop your BKB and ult afterwards. It's really just like who can initiate, like, who can take the better fight. One fight for either team, and this game goes completely south for the other team. One, one fight just to crack it all open. Seriously, it, it, it really feels that way. Like, both of the cores on, on both sides, Matamba and Yuragi, are so huge that I think if they if they get a good initiation, like, they're just going to get an ultra kill. Either of these two heroes. Yeah, right now, Yuragi 5-0-5, and five, having a perfect game. Old Tumby though over here, five, two, and six. Nothing to sneeze at. Is actually taken over the net worth at this point as well. So and farming up the storm. Both of them just very Dyer formidable. Tiger blinking forward. He wanted that kill. Have to be careful though. Zai rolling on through. Could take a couple hits. Could try to jump there, but again they have the BKB and all of a sudden he's here. Zai that last hit. He's gonna go. This is the Yule follow-up. What the Zampire here? Coming out from the game and one that it's a good save here though. Coming out from me. They need to get some more lockdown for the stroll. Uh, he's already out of the storm using that BKB. They're just going to leave the area on the side of Liquid. All right, so nothing happened. Very nice. Yeah, that was a nice little execution there from Zai, keeping himself alive and starting that fight. Not exactly the best place to fight for either team because it's towards the bot area and you know that Roche is probably respawning soon. Uh, and so you want to fight around the Roche pit, but, you know, like I said, both of these teams feel like they've been on the cusp of, you know, team wiping for the entire game, and all they need is, like, to kill one hero, and then I think either carry can snowball and, and chase and, like, kill a bunch of heroes here, so both teams feel this, uh, this pressure that, like, okay, we could, like, blow this game wide open at any moment. They're trying to find this opening here on the side of OGDZM. Yeah, yeah, we'll get revealed, does throw out the shackles, comes in through again, has a BKB, the scatter blitz, they're coming out from Tiger, looking out forward, there'll be no Foxy down, Monty out in this fight. They're gonna try to fight through, rolling thunder again, another save coming out here for Nishan himself this time. Now the easiest silence of the fight was opening. Should they get the kill on Roshi Misha? Sadia is sitting very, very low. They'll kill him, Sadia first. Misha next to follow. But Zyde is taking a lot of damage. There's going to be buybacks coming out from both of these support heroes. Yuragi hiding in the bell. Waiting patiently. Boxy rejoining here with this relocate. Watch the point to help out. Monty taking a look at low. They'll be able to get rid of Tom Monty as they'll turn right back around and get the score. is looking very sick. But Misha comes back in with a save. Kevin, Yuragi, 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 Yu
All right, 12K net worth lead. We have an Aegis online for OG. Technically, he still has not been killed by the enemy team, though, Yuragi. You know? I don't know if that's impressive or depressing. When I agree know. with that. I, I, don't think, it, but, uh, I don't think Roshan's an enemy, because you go into his house and start fighting him, and he fights you back and say, oh, he's an enemy. He's you're fighting robbing him, time. you know? You're literally murdering him. Yeah. And then robbing him. The, the yeah. murdering, to me, is probably worse. I, I should think so, yes. Well, not a fan is a stiff of murder. That's good. Oh, Thank you for cleaning that up first, Jenkins. OG absolutely murdering Team Liquid here. Looking very powerful. Is there guys that drank their gamer juice this morning? Liquid they're, feeling their Red Bull, because that's what OG is sponsored yes, by. Yes, that is their gamer juice of choice. <laughs> Liquid, though, they're. Uh... I mean, you still, Matsu's, you know, despite everything, still top of the net worth, still very powerful. It's just these fights are going so sideways for them. And a lot of the times it feels like they're just not prepared. OG is bringing the fight to them and they're being very aggressive. And, and we're seeing in these fights exactly why people are so critical of Troll as a hero. It's that there are just a lot of strong things in the game, you know, Heroes, concepts, oh. items that exist to kite troll. And like, sure, he does this absolute immense amount of damage if he can get on top of you. But that, that, that's a big if. That's a big if. You know, you have a snap fire cookie, you have uh, no, Shadow Demon in prison, you have four stabs, you have uh, the Purge, Dual Scepters, so much. I figured someone was coming here for Zai, but... Who's was baiting who, though? That is the real <laughs> question. I think they're just gonna leave. I don't think they want this yet. Look at this. They're out of there. So a nice little play, right? Coming out from Liquid, forcing out some TPs. They know that they want to be very aggressive, uh, but the reload, of course, you know, that is gonna be on cooldown. I'll have to keep that in mind. So how does Liquid make OG play into them? Right now it feels like they just want to avoid it at all costs, right? Because they have an Aegis, they've got this lead. What's the play here? So the play, and I clicked his eye to see because immediately when you're like, well, you know, what, what do they do? I look at the TA and I think like, okay, your OG needs to be dealt with, but I don't think they're killing him because there's too much save coming out from OG. So Zai has a heaven to halberd. They're going to halberd your OG, and then I think they need to kill the SD because I'll Otherwise, SD is going to kite your troll, and troll can't do anything. Like, troll can 1v5 if he doesn't get kited, but that's that's tough. So I think you need to kill the kiting heroes, and, but during that, you can't just die to Yuragi, so that's where the Heaven's Halford comes in on Zai. Smoked up over on the side of OG. He's trying to get some information. Find themselves not to. Oh, a little bit to play. Back off a little bit. Amar getting into position. The IO coming in. We'll be able to save him. It's going to end up paying for this with his life. Oh, well, Matu does go to the tower. Yeah, so we're we're the hoping, hoping to catch him off guard. Some plot. Right on Moxie. Plus, that's the chat. How fast do you think Amar was like spamming his son <laughs> on the. The IO relocate. Oh. I, like, no, I like to think he's a cool guy, just kind of casually like, oh, I know exactly the time. No, 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 that, cool. kid, was, that kid was spamming it. <laughs> I, he was a thousand APM, I can tell you that much. All right, all right. <laughs> Aegis does get reclaimed, so Liquid has managed to outlast that. Be a little bit less scary getting into these fights. The fight is coming to them. I've got the death so. We've got the damage, the full Daedalus over on Yuragi. These towers are crumbling. Radiant top tower does not Oh, and there's a double damage in the top bottom. area. <laughs> really they see Mickey because they have that nice... Observer. Look at the way they circle like a bunch of sharks. <laughs> Mickey didn't even get a chance to be alive there. Chum in the water, my friend. He's sitting there thinking, like, what the, why is the outpost vision so large? How did they see me? There's a ward on it. There's they they see you. This is a good ward. Yeah, the warding the warding has been really nice from both sides. Uh, just placing wards, like, in a place that would be defensive usually, but when you're ahead, you know that the enemy team wants to, like, farm into your area. So it becomes, like, an aggressive ward the more ahead you are. That's, uh... 
it's not an easy dis- distinction to make when you're a support mm-hmm. because like if you're warding defensively or if you're trying to war aggressively then you end up putting one of these wards down that's like inherently defensive and then you're not ahead like you think you are then it's just a defensive ward your team flames you it's like dude where's the aggressive wards but in this game it is an aggressive ward I'll give them enough information to make a nice play there does feel a little hard though right now for OG to go forward and we did just see the uh, Heaven's Halberd is completed now for Zai so they'll have to find the angle though to make it work that is going to be the tricky bit I almost... these movements have been very very nice this game I feel like they need a second one because, I, I, like, I guess on OG, there's just so many heroes that need to be dealt with before Yuragi. So many Kaidi heroes, like, yeah. you have to kill Snap, you probably want to kill... You can even, like, argue killing DK first, but SD, of course. Oh, they're going. Oh, they want Ma2. Scatter Blast, Ma2. Sorry, go forward a little bit. You can hear it, though. Press the team nearby. Ready for action, if necessary. They've gone and just smoked up. Drop another trap. Easy, I'm just poking. Little pokes here and there, seeing if they can bait anything out as Liquid still searches to find the this angle. But you know, they'll back off a little bit. Looks like they're trying to just do that, go back, but no one's not showing they have that. It's on the uh, preparing of counterattack that they need to do. It also lives a little too close. Or shining where you <laughs> lost the game because you get a little too excited. You got sleep, you fight right before you know, you're sport set on a back, you can otherwise but the fight and take the rope and then you can. So it's kind of like in any game you think, all right, we'll just wait for the rope spawn, but it, it very late spawn. <laughs> Two minutes, four three seconds, something like that. Almost max. Yep, anytime soon. It, it's gonna a pretty passive game until then, I think. Because he said that we're going to have a fight break. Yeah, I know. You know that, yeah. right? <laughs> well, OG honestly is doing a really good job poking. I like that they're not afraid in this Stupendous. constantly like threatening liquid. Like, think about how oppressive that feels in a game where like your strongest hero is running forward and you know that like that hero, if they get gone on, it's a good fight for you. And so OG is just like, yeah, we're just going to we're just gonna blink in and do damage to him and just mess with him, get him like a little bit low, so... It's like, okay, maybe, maybe if we go on them at 100% HP, it's going to be good for you. But if they're at 60% HP, because we just keep poking and we're not afraid of you, like, is that fight the same? Like, makes you guess, you can guess yourself if you're Liquid. The fact that OG is playing with such cojones, uh, although they don't have to right now because, of course, Liquid is just sitting in their base. So it's kind of, it's, it's the idea of war, right? The idea of warfare is that you wear your opponents down to the point where they're forced to do something out of desperation forced to go and try to get rid of some of those resources and this is you know they managed to get the hit off they're gonna get the disarm off onto the polo they just can't do anything here because if it can finally take out Sadia Sadia buying back you see those down fire pieces getting dumped up but they have the BKBs so they'll take down Misha so there's no save available here for the side of OG should they need a nice PD on them coming out from Tiger they get the kill over onto Zai all the damage being placed over to Foxy they'll get the kill on Foxy as well now they're flying back this little one who wants to be a part of the fight jumping back over onto Tiger nice scatter glass but with Foxy tethering up will be able to go finally help kill off Tiger big hits coming up and getting Foxy falls and I need to so much damage at Foxy they have nothing to cancel out and he is going to make it out. Looking very, very nervous on the way out. I could see what Liquid were trying to go for in that fight. They were trying to chain stun onto uh, BZM while uh, Mickey jumped the back lines and jumped the SD, but unfortunately for Liquid, SD was able to get the Imprison off, which saved BZM for long enough to turn and, and win that fight. Uh, but I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to do this like split fight thing where they have a few heroes dealing with a few different targets. And uh, man, it's so hard to fight in Dota like that. Uh, it, it's way easier if you just have an Enigma or a Titan. Or like, yeah. It's being annoying. I, I love I love how aggressive he, he is with his poking though. It's like, like I said, it just instills so much fear in you as an opponent. It's like, is this guy like committing or is he not? Like he's remedying in, so it kind of looks like it. This guy just crazy, you know? You never know. I don't think he knows. I think he's just feeling. Like, he's just feeling this game right now, uh, and, and I know that's a lot of the time what Ember Spirit players do. So it doesn't surprise me. Ooh, are we about to get an ad for uh, Mr. Shadow Demon? Who's getting us? Is it Amar? Nah, dude, that's a support. You don't get supports the ags. He's the five. He can buy his own. 
You can't buy his Hell helmet. Yeah, is this Mark. economy? My boy. Picking up that ass. He's got that Scotty. I love that Amara is always like, I'm a carry. I'm not buying offline items. The guy doesn't even have full boots. <laughs> he does, he's too cool for balance, dude. I love his builds. I, saw, I was watching one of his pubs the other day. I saw him go Butterfly Mars. And I was like, I, I can't tell if this is like terrible or the most chat thing ever. And then he won and he's like, it's rank, bad then if he he's wins. ranked 50. Yeah, it's like, he just thinks on a, he just thinks totally differently Die about the game, which is so cool to see. He's got to be careful about that though, because he can get punished for it. Oh yeah, we saw that. I mean, we saw that a bit in the previous series that they played. He got punished a couple of times. A bit. But it's something that can be dialed back. Like, I, I think he's... Uh, you know, a, a diamond in the rough. I don't want to say diamond in the rough. He's on OG, but <laughs> yes, I don't think he needs to call him you know, a diamond in the rough. At this point. A little bit of polishing, and this kid is is scary. Like seriously, world class scary. He already seems pretty nuts, but I think he he even has potential, which is. I mean, that's the fun thing about seeing these very young players, too, is that they haven't reached their max potential yet. They're still training, they're still learning, they're getting the chance to play against very large names. It's a pretty cool thing. Yagi taking a little bit of damage here, does have the Aegis, doesn't seem too concerned, just gonna continue to poke. And like we said, it's coming down to who has the most resources in these fights, because they're pretty tight, it feels like, a lot of the times, but if you can chip away at their health, right? If you can start a fight where some of the the heroes over on the side of Liquid are just a little bit lower. That can determine how everything goes down. Now he's just going to keep moving around. Monty running for his life. They have that BKB on him as I rolling around, trying to force them off of this tower. They'll go and they don't have any creeps just yet, but they're on their way. I'll take down the tower. They're going right for a finish here. All right. All right, boys. All right, I see you. Monty, the jump forward again from Amar. Look at this. You're on. He's just like, all right, Mark, you do your thing. I'm just going to hit these buildings. I would like to win this game. Please, thank you. Cookie out for it. Another save over to that line. Look at the DK slow. He's scummy. And he's so tanky here. Look at him. So, yeah, they're doing a lot of damage, but, like, this is just all looking good for Monty here. As they have some big damage coming up for you. Okay, coming up for me, the, uh, Oh, the damage is being done to the towers. The ancient is exposed. I don't know what Liquid Matumba can do right now. It's Nick Gang. They're trying to find anything. They're trying to find something. They can't even do it. Nick Gang will fall. How could he have fallen? They've got their eyes again. They'll kill Matumba Man. And this is looking like this uh, This game is very much belonging to the side of that city. There it is. There's the GG call. That's OG. They're looking real, real good. I mean, these are just two exceptional world class teams. And I think if you're liquid, Looking at that game uh, back, you just think like the way that OG played their team fights was extremely good. They were always jumping the back lines, and Liquid did try to do that, but like one or two team fights too late. And it seems like. Radiance turn to ban. The Dyer get a ban. Here's the Radiant Band. Dyer's Band now. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. 
Radiant's turn to pick. Dyer's turn to pick. <laughs> Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Dyer's turn to be Weaver. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Radiant's turn to pick. We hold the horn of madness. Radiant's turn to pick. Slada. Alright, guys, I know we probably lost the game. Good dire, get a ban. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Here's the Radiant Ban. Ten seconds. seconds remaining. Dyer's ban now. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Radiant's turn to ban. Dyer's ban now. Ten seconds. Five.
five seconds remaining. Dyer's turn to pick. Radiant's turn to pick. Dazzle. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Radiant's turn to pick. Shadow Fiend. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Dyer's turn to be Tide Hunter. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Here's the Radiant Bat. Razor. Ten seconds. Focuses on pulling the wave with Sprint Level 1. So you just disconnect the lane Five immediately against Razor remaining. and whatever support you're with just tries to zone off the Dazzle so you get the pulls through. Because if you're just playing this lane head, heads up, you're just going to get rolled, right? Like, there's no way you play yeah, on staff. I mean, you, can pull, you can always pull the early waves, get yeah. level two or three timing. I mean, Slaughter Snap is a pretty strong lane if you get to all in someone, right? It just doesn't keep someone in and you minus armor. I think it's possible you can just all in this dazzle on the side if you really play for it. You just play get to kind man. of let the carry have his way to a degree. Try and limit the interaction with him. It just feels high risk, high reward. If you're all in on Dazzle and you don't get the kill, you're poison touched, you get static linked, and you're not really getting out, right? Because yeah. the slowest just overwhelming. I mean, you, can you, can you, can you can sprint all the way. Uh, TP away always, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Both Fair. teams looking like they're targeting mid laners for the final picks on both sides, but it could be a gamble. Yeah, I could see any, but I could see both teams having Mag Five Razor being sent rain. mid for Liquid or SF, yeah. Tide being sent mid for OG. Options are still wide. Which, I mean, from a theory standpoint, it's somewhat favor second pick, I think. Because you get to actually see what that yeah. commits to and you get to adjust, right? Um, the current four matchups are good for SF mid. So, uh, I think back in the day, there was a phase when Razor performed really well against SF. I think that's an SF favorite lane through and through now. Like, you can't you can't run it. It's just the damage is way too overwhelming too fast. So obviously, that is under the condition you go raises. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> see, that's what I'm curious. <laughs> you have to go raises if you do that one-on-one uh, -on -one mid, but... Um, I think most of the mid-SFs are still going. Yeah, they probably are. Uh, I mean, there's not much that destroys SF in the current meta, I think. You're probably talking about some of your niche peaks in terms of 
like a Lena sniper type heroes. Yeah, Lena. And maybe you gank him. I mean, I think what really slows SF's game down is when this hero has early deaths. Because mm -hmm. it takes a while for him to recover from it. His whole farm cycle of going to side oh, camps back to mid getting wounds no. gets disrupted. I mean, heroes like Enchantress or something, right? But you're looking at Dazzle Weaver. Your mid game potential isn't it, super high. Weaver can do it if he's still one in his lane. You just Sakuchi and bug the guy. It's a pretty solid kill right potential. To but it doesn't look like a game you can leave his off lane alone. So until until we see this last pick, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. Do you have like a good read on what Liquid's plan is with these four? Like, do you think the last pick is just gonna be solving everything or am I seeing problems that aren't there? Like I look at this lineup and I have a hard time imagining how you enter fights, what the game plan is entirely, like what timing you're aiming for. I think that's way more straightforward for me with OG's draft. Right. Yep, there's your fight starter. Yeah, that helps for sure. Slight power user too. Ember mag. Sure. Okay. I mean, I think you either go the fight, you either go the route where you pick a spirit and you say, okay, we're going to try and play some actual tempo, hold some of the map, be able to engage you, or you pick some ultra carry there, put the razor mid, use him as a bulwark and say, at some point, we're going to enter the Roche pit, come into us, and use the Dazzle Mag as counter initiators, which is a route, though I don't think it would have worked out that well for him just because. I think it's pretty hard to play that in the current meta. I definitely think the Ember was the right direction for this. Um, and now they've ended up putting them in this position three, so he's going to get more levels. Uh, the supports were Dazzle Weaver, and OG opted for Tide 5, so they did come in in that direction, and they will play this one offline. I think it's really exciting. Uh, I'm happy Liquid picked this last hero. That has me a little bit more confident, and at least I have an easier time envisioning what they're trying to do you know, with the strategy. Uh, so this might be another great game. And Avery, you were saying that depending on where the Razor might go versus the Slaughter. Slaughter might have to do tricky stuff with wave pulling. Is that still going to be the case? Because it is Matu on the Razor, Amar on the Slaughter. That can be a really tough lane. It depends. If he if they find a way to wiggle out of the early waves, for example, they get to the level three and they can all in with the minus armor, the cookie, the stun, whatever. Like, Razor can even die on that lane if all things are even. But it's a question of do you ever get there on an even yeah. footing. And it should be pretty difficult. Let's find out. It's time. I forget to oh, Jason Moxie. All right, well, OG was showing some very strong dominance in game number one. It's time for Liquid to punch back and uh, maybe utilize, you know, this Zy Madness is always a very fun thing to watch. Kindness, guys. Yeah, you know, you have a carry. Razor is the only thing to pair up with it. Like, they're relying uh, fairly heavy uh, on Mickey having a solid game here to be the Magnus empower target. I feel like SF is really good as a carry. Like, I, I almost want to say he's just a carry. Like, he's a better carry than he is a mid. I don't know if we've seen it lose yet. Not 100% sure. I do know that we are just seeing it. At least I haven't. Very, very powerful uh, when they start doing this right-click build. It just farms so fast. It hits so hard. You just get crit for your entire HP if you're a Dazzle. It's sad, but great lane for a Dazzle. I mean, battle. Dazzle Razor? Slardar is going to have such a tough time here. Like, Razor alone, you just run at him. You just run at the Slardar, steal his damage, easy last hits, dazzle, you press Q, keep that buff up. Although it doesn't work with the Razor's right clicks anymore. It's, it's just dazzles, but it does slow a lot now. How do you approach this lane, then? How do you make this so you're not, you know, being totally zoned out or feeding? I think uh, maybe it was SVG that had mentioned it. The wave cutting is definitely the play. Like anytime you're in one of these really unfavorable lanes, it's like 60-30, you just, you just cut wave. Uh, and in the off lane, you can always get away with that. So why not? Off to go. Down here, BZM. Yuragi will start off the game with the first blood. Wait, did Yuragi start a presence of the Dark Lord? That is cool. So that's a lot of right-click damage for that level one engagement. Unfortunately, with the kill, he doesn't get any souls, but still, I mean, minus four armor at level one. People were talking about how the TA meld is is OP because uh, it was, you know, minus seven armor at level one. Minus four permanent is, and that's pretty nuts as well. Well, it was enough to help give him that first blood, that's for sure, so. Yeah, with five heroes right-clicking, it's a ton yeah. of damage. <laughs> interested to see how this lane goes now the way that uh you obviously know liquid wants to dominate and uh yaraki down here just gonna keep trading some hits with foxy not much that misha can really do here other than throw his body forward at this time 
Insania, uh, dealing with this Taiga six mangoes. Like, it's so annoying. It's gonna keep on regening here. Oh, yeah. The 13 regen with the tango going. 7.3 without. I know it's like it's not a traditional 1v1, but I feel like every time we look over at Taiga and Insania, it feels like a 1v1. The way that they keep like going after each other. You know they're going they're for each yeah. other too. Like. It's friendly competition, like yeah. if you play it in yeah. house with your friends. Sort of deal. It's a little bit more official. Yeah. With a major on the line. Yeah. Potentially. Potentially. But it is nice to see the boys having a good time, realizing that there's no bad blood between the two of them. I mean, this is refreshing. This is kind of cool. The way that they're dealing with this lane is that Taiga just bought these mangoes, which looks hilarious, but it gives them a regen. And he's just playing to the right and soaking all of the Dazzle Qs for Slardar. So Amar's actually having a pretty good lane. It does feel like if Amar has a very comfortable lane, they usually get to put this massive amount of aggression out of OG. Perhaps that's the idea is like, all right, this guy is one of the uh, keystones to how they like to play. Let's make sure that he's feeling miserable, but he's having a good enough time. He's doing okay. I mean, six denies on Tampa Man, so that's rough, but Slardar versus Razor. Well, we were expect? concerned that they would, like, feed, though, at this point. Like, it would be just too difficult for him to even approach. Yeah, I thought they would. I really thought they would get boots on Tiger and Wave Cut. SF is so annoying as a safe laner. You basically have to kill him. Boxy needs to be a little careful here. They do a lot of damage. They're just walking down Boxy. He does have the Scoochie up at the last minute. But uh, that is a lot of damage that's been applied, and does just pick up some fresh regen. So, nice dumb really straight here, though. I mean, this is another one of those like last game we saw this as well uh, between the Pango and the TA. Mag versus SF is another one of these like one v one mid matchups that you'll often see, and Mag does really well against SF early because of the huge damage advantage that you have. But like, eventually, I believe that's will, you know, freely CS you. Yeah. Although Misha, Misha being a tight hunter is a bit of an issue. I think you're much more comfortable with a Weaver supporting you than a tight hunter supporting you. Right. So there, there is actually kill threat on SF down here. <laughs> Was this a situation that after a certain point, Yoraki's just going to go off into the jungle and it's going to allow Misha to soap, or...? Uh, he could, he can. SF definitely can once you have lifesteal, but to me, this hero is played a lot better when you, like, maybe get a kill with a rotation from Puck or something, and then you just dominate the lane. Okay. By just getting huge uh, CS with your, you know, 100 damage. Tiger realizing they don't have anything to cancel this TP, so it's just gonna zip on out right underneath the noses. Again, it's a very measured game here. Nothing too, too wild right off the bat. Just gonna farm up and be patient, wait for those item timings, and I think we're gonna see a very aggressive OG start running at Liquid. People have gotten so good at laning. This is such a frequent occurrence these days in every region, where you just don't see a, like a, a huge amount of kills in the early game until like the runes start spawning and people start moving out of their lanes. Like people have gotten so good at securing range creeps and you know pulling blocking poles, playing to the right and left of the lane, like, laning in general has gotten a lot, a lot better from people. And so, it's just, it's just funny, like, two years ago, there would be so many kills at this point, but this is just how Dota is now. People are too good. I think we were having that conversation. Let's bring back to that shockwave. Skewer forward here from Zai, wants to put enough damage out. Not gonna quite have it. A prize. They'll be absolutely fine. But no, we were having this conversation in the green room and talking about how just the scale of Dota has Perhaps. Tyga, can he get the deny? Yes, he can! It's gonna be the neutral creep who gets the final hit. You see what I mean? It's like, yeah. people are just so good at, like, buzz killing. You're just not gonna kill me, I'm gonna die to tier 2, I'm gonna die to neutral creeps. You know, it's like, oh, I'm suiciding right nice. now for regen. Like, killing people is not even that good anyway, because they come back and they're full HP, full mana, and then they just own you, so... The skill cap has definitely evolved to be much higher, though, as we get further and further here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... I mean, it, it's like... Yeah, might as well. Might as well. It's such a, it's such a funny state that Dota is in, and I think a part of it, you bought a fills as well. Same idea. Waterboy. Ooh, girl, nice rotation coming out from Dazzle, but 
Again, just gonna be able to zip away. They don't have any super hard lockdown. They'll slow down, make it a little bit with the scatter blast. We'll force BZM though to go and use that very fire just to ensure. Oh, finishes up this bottling. But yeah, like you said, like it's all coming down to these minuscule details. Which is really kind of crazy to think about. Like, remember to me? when people first started smoking <laughs> to, to go and plant words? Like, we were all like, oh my god, that's next level now. It's just it's next nature to us. Yeah, I think the first, the first like, reaction to that was like, oh, that's terrible. Why would you solo smoke? And then slowly but surely you realize, like, the amount of vision that you get from it. It's like, oh my god, that's amazing. Why, why wouldn't why you Why haven't solo we been smoke? doing this the whole time? Exactly. Well, can yeah. Suiciding, very similar thing. I think a part of it is, like, the fact that careers take so long to bring you regen. And yet lanes are like so easily won by just buying a ton of regen for your core. So it's kind of like the supports get owned. Nice hop here, Boxy, forced to pop some of that regen. You have a little bit of a rotation from Taiga. Now this, this seems wild to me too, the fact that they're just leaving a mark here all alone. And again, I feel like this lane should have gone much differently for the side of Liquid, from what everyone was saying anyway. <laughs> It's, he's not supposed to farm that well. I mean, he's not. Like, the the old Dazzle, where the Q could be procced by Razor, you could probably kill Amar up here. Mm -hmm. But another, another thing that has changed attack. in the past few years with Dota is people are really good at, like, staticking and always 50 50 the offlane. Mm -hmm. Just pulling the creeps back to your tower, and it's like, you're not going to dive that tier one tower to get a kill on Amar. So as long as, like, he can cut waves and... D ward and pull camps and stuff like that. Like he's got he's got ways to play the lane. Indeed he is. Nice little bash here over on the Just gonna back off. Bottom lane, the picky up forward. Not sure they have quite enough to finish off size. He is underneath the tower. Oxy clicking away on Tyga. Yeah, Let's see so if he gets the final kill, but Tyga going to run into the arms of his fellow supports. They'll salve up. As a Zai, but Zai Salve gets interrupted thanks to that gush. Bit of a stack camp here too. A couple of these creeps. I, I like that they're down here with Taiga because I feel like this is recognizing that SF, if given like a little bit of a lead, can just absolutely dumpster in terms of CS. Like you just can't enter the lane against him. But Zai is honestly just playing this really well. Like his little mechanics with like pulling creeps away, like you can see him doing that with the hard camp, you know, getting last hits with his with his empower. Like Zai is just a really good instinct player in general, but also like when it comes to lane. I also think this is a very good hero for him on top of everything else. We do see the rotation with the Razor. Go for the RP, coming out from Zai. Let's deal all the damage as possible. Yagi trying to run away, he's not going to be able to do it. He will fall, so we'll Misha on the back lines the box. So a good rotation here. And again, it's the top of man. I, I, love, I love his rotations in both of these games. Once again, just to like restate it, it's, it's not something it's not typical of your position one to make it's any rotations. No, it's not. I would say, say this is something the Liquid does, even before they picked up, you know, not too here, that they always kind of hold up on Arcania. Use the Dream Coil, but I'm trying to get some different from Arcania, just towards the back of it. So Dream Coil gets used, doesn't end up resulting in a kill. But uh, I would say that, you know, OG in the past, they always were very flexible with the way that they moved their players. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, the, always the mid player who's going to be moving. It's not always what will be quite high. It was, you know, sometimes it was Nick Gay, sometimes it was Boxy. Sometimes it looks like Zai takes a lot of damage here and he's to get himself underneath that Dariog. He starts pulling off his switch and back around, give a couple clicks off to Nick Gay. BZM joining in has the silence off. They need to have some sort of way to hold him in place, though. I'm not sure they possess it at this time. There's more people joining into the fray here. Need to get in clips around. Boxy dropping the swarm over onto Amar. Needs to be careful, safe. Very, very low. So have to get that bump up as fast as possible. Looks like BZM will assist with that. They're just go away, but they still managed to get caught onto Amar. Nisha clicking away on Zai Titans here, though. They're gonna try to make some moves over on to Zai, but they need to be careful they don't go too far. Another orb getting tossed out. Boxy gets to prevent the opening the rest of for the find the kill on BZM. Look what this time bringing all the aggression to the door of OG. They're not done. They want me shot. Can they get him? Yes, they can. I, I love how active they're being, like Boxy in particular. Every single time you see a play made by OG, it's like the camera moves a little bit to you know the south or the north or whatever. And it's like, oh, Bach, he's already there, throwing bugs on the back line. Like he's being such a tremendous pain in the ass right now. And 
you know, you are a hero that has max move speed, so I suppose it's, you know, easier to do this on Weaver than others, but then to just have the wherewithal to, like, always be at the fight and in the most annoying place possible, I mean, it's it's character flipping right now. It's letting Mickey, like, go back in every time, like, he's just in and out, in and out. Never Keeping Zai alive, too, Zai's so itemization. This keeps him alive, he's got the Ring of Hell. Yeah, they're just like poking. Look, look at this. Three I know, right up back lines. It's it's beautiful the way that Boxy's allowed to skirmish throughout this entire time. He was meant to doing this like exact same thing that we saw in the bot lane. He was being so annoying. This this looks like a really good hero for Boxy. Using echolocation. Well, he plucked some of that in the in the off lane, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like the stranger to it. It's just slightly less farm priority. Yeah, he's a, not a stranger to floor position either. It's like on previous like what he would frequently play floor position sometimes swapping in and out with Tanya. <laughs> getting so excited that the entire one camp shakes here, but Misha is going to get left behind as Matu uses that plasma field. He's yeah, going to grab himself up a nice invis rune. Mickey's going to be denied of that. Poor Misha, his inventory is so barren. Sometimes it's I feel like that is five. It's so sad. No boots, please. I need shoes, my feet. <laughs> But BZM does have his travels up. Uh, that means that OG naturally are going to have a, a bit of a map advantage. He can always be bought and then I'll also like show up towards top. Right now, and I'm like, I had time to find a snack. They're really protecting the top tower quite well. The couple skirmishes coming out here from the OG, they've just not been successful as liquid. Seems to have a good idea of how they want to approach this, but again, it's, sometimes it feels a little like they just keep throwing bodies up against the wall, right? I like it. I mean, they have the heroes for doing it. Uh, last game, Matamba Man was running around on a troll, which is pretty atypical, and, you know, running around on a razor, maybe atypical for a carry, but not atypical for a razor to do, so if they do have the heroes for running and taking these small skirmishes, absolutely. Like they don't have crazy team fight, but they do have these like great Dyer's skirmishing heroes. Tower is under sure. attack. Weaver, Ember. Uh, once Zuck gets up his blink, like they will have good team fight, but you know, that's always a later item for Magnus offlane. I was referring more to the fact that OG keeps throwing bodies up into this top lane. Like you can tell they really want to crap. No, OG does, up, yeah. They're just struggling. Yeah. That rotation from Yoragi was one of those like on the cusp of if you go up like six minutes, there's almost no way to defend a tier one tower. And so he dies, and then he goes up there, and he's like, well, okay, I, like, I can't go back box, it's unsafe now, so I'm just gonna go top and get the tower. But it, it's getting to the period where, like, you now need to make a move for that tower. Right. So it was in that weird, like, interim period where it's it's hard to be 100% sure if that's a good play or not. And I remember in that fight, like, Zai survived that 10% HP or something, so it, it almost was a good play from, from OG. It's just, like, a little bit of a miscalculation and, and good plays from Liquid. So is this a situation where OG should continue to throw their bodies over at Liquid, because Liquid does have a great skirmishing lineup? No. Or, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, look, you can see Boxy spent a lot of time up here, and uh, did end up falling in one of the earlier skirmishes. I like how you, how you say Boxy just because it's Slardar. You're like, oh, surely that must be Boxy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Omar. My brain. My like, brain. I, I just, I see Slardar, and I think immediately, I think like, Boxy. Boxy. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah, Mar has been chilling top, and he is close to his blink dagger, so I think that's probably what they're gonna wait for. They also have Ravage on Misha, who probably has timing is to get a pair of boots uh, so he can actually get in there and hit that Ravage. He's getting closer. He's saving up those pennies. Look at it. Yeah, he's got them queued up. He's there like, we oh, go. Yeah. <gasps> Hell yeah. Boots. No, no, no. What are you doing? Go get your boots. Doesn't have enough yet for the boots. He's gonna walk into Zai. Zai going to deny Misha the dream of having boots on his feet. I don't know if they go for this chat. Yeah, you know, they're gonna fight into uh, Amar here if they're not careful. The crap back. Oh, God. He's just. Dyer's top tower Let the man have is boots. under attack. That's one of those things where if you're Misha and you walk up there, you're just like, what the hell is Zai doing here? Zai is the habit of doing that. He's just in like really weird positions, but then they end up being extremely good positions. Like his, his read on things, his instincts are just insane. He's seeking. Just like the way that they're zoning shit. over here, um, like, like Liquid is just completely taken over this area. And it looks like OG just doesn't know how to respond to this now. Ember is looking like a really good hero in both of these games. Like, I mean, Mickey's well known for his Ember. Yeah, Mickey's playing it extremely well. Like, I just want to shout out Boxy because of his 
like being in the right place at all times. But Mickey on Ember, it's, it's like it's it's the same thing. Uh, he's been just poking and being this like massive nuisance, super farmed. And you know we talked about it. Like he's the hero that needs to be farmed because they have a Magnus in power. So he's the one that's going to be getting buffed up by this. So him having a good game is really good for Liquid. Mickey just walking into the smoke gank immediately is leashed up. Does have Boxy nearby. Does have Insania though. Is going to be able to go throughout the shallow grave. He's alive a little longer. In fact, Mickey thinking about going back and that's like this, this considerable amount of damage. Mickey's got his Songe now too. So like, man. Zai has a full Lotus Orb, by the way. Yep. Uh, I'm actually seeing this a lot more frequently these days. Uh, Lotus, it's just an amazing item. It's fantastic against Sardar. Uh, it's fantastic against all of the minus armor that OG has. Actually, I saw Zai do this in a pub. He was silencer offlane, and he went plate mail, plate mail, uh, building into a Shiva in a Lotus orb. So, like, he just thinks that if you're going to do a minus armor strike, there's just good enough armor in the game that it's just not good. <laughs> Now that, uh, like, and the more that I think about the Lotus Orb, I, I, I'm thinking about how OG like wants to get back into the game. And to me, it's they pick up the Blink Dagger on Slaughter, and then they like burst somebody with the minus armor in, in, in stun duration. But if Zai is just sitting behind and like Lotus is somebody and takes that minus armor off, I think that Liquid has such a gold lead that if it's like an Ember getting gone on, or uh, even like Matumba Man getting gone on. I don't think they're gonna kill them because of this Lotus Orb. So Zai, by picking this item up first, like, it looks funny, but he's kind of like, taking away the one way, the one obvious way back into the game for OG, which is super cool. He's I completely mean, buffing and protecting, right? Like you've got an Empower that he's gonna throw out. You've got the fact he's got a Lotus Orb that's gonna be able to remove any silences. It's nice. It's definitely a different way of looking at, uh, you know, playing the position for the offline. It's really good, and pairing it up with the Tumble Man's BKB timing too, you can't just ravage him and deal with him that way. And you also can't just slaughter amp him and deal with him that way. Like, if you can't kill him with physical, and you can't kill him with magical, like, what the hell is kill him? What's left? What's left? It's so smart. OG, feeling a little pressured here, not feeling comfortable enough to be fully in their own triangle. They are split up a little bit, though. They're trying to, uh, you know, push out several lanes. You can see BZM doing the, the puck thing, where he's just going to try to give it a shove. Of course, very difficult to get your hands on them, but they're in the Roche pit. Yeah, they're, they're on the side of Liquid. They, they're not afraid. They have plenty of negative armor. Uh, it's pretty hard for them to, to make these moves. In fact, look at this Boxy. He's going to go poke a little on Misha. Again, they have that medallion, and this is some of their big team fight here. They lose Misha. It's just, yeah, look at that. Because a casual little clip coming out from Matu. My boy still has no boots. I mean, this is how support Tidehunter can feel if the lane doesn't go particularly well, where you're, just, you're kind of just a Ravage, but Super hasn't given them the opportunity to use the Ravage in a way that wouldn't just be terrible. Yeah, he went from looking his tiger there, but like if they had forced out a Ravage, it would have been a waste. Yeah, it would have been absolutely. a complete waste because, you know, he needs to have that. So they're just finding him really early. And again, that is, you know, the position five you're supposed to tank, ganks, break smokes. But when you're that important, uh, it becomes a lot more difficult for you to play this role on that hero. Yeah, the Ravage, the ravage becomes more and more important the farther behind you fall because it's like, okay, like, you know, how how are we going to kill them when we're at this deficit? Like, we need to hit more and more heroes with this AoE ability because then you get more value out of it. Um, but you're, you're, you're doing that with a guy that, like, just picked up boots and, and God knows he's not getting a Blink Dagger for another 20 minutes in this game, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's tough for OG and Liquid is just doing a really good job pressuring you, but also on the flip side, I like OG is like, alright, well, we're in just farm mode, like, we're whatever fighting them, we're not gonna get this top tower, we'll just we'll push them entire mode, so... We'll try for that, though. Do indeed, so Matamba Man picking up the Aegis of the Immortal. I'd be interested to see how they decide to move here. We did just get a Blink Dagger picked up and pop on the side of OG, so a little bit more initiation if necessary. God knows Misha is uh, not gonna be able to provide that. 
not right now, anyway. He's trying. He is. He's insane. Let's uh, this, uh, look down. You're not going to love that the puck right now. Throw out that Lotus Orb. Oh. What's this? Dia for the Pine Nest Talk 2. I like that Zai tries for it. Like, he just can't resist but to go for the really high skill plays where like you shouldn't be able to catch a puck because you know puck can just face shift blink in the right direction but he's like i'm gonna frame perfect this <laughs> okay Zai, let's relax dude maybe next time amar though does get spotted out by insania and they really into the oh, the oh, look at the ball pushing though they get the save off last second amar will fall in case he's gonna make it out alive thanks to his support it looks like he is down four here from bz i'm going to try to punish this though he stayed a little bit too long mickey all of insania's hopes and dreams were not as now he's gonna get clutched down by bz i'm zai also forced to run away can they finish him off can they cancel it out they cannot so they'll end up losing mickey despite insania's best hunt for here and zai It's a, it's a big rip in pepperonis to hit such like a sick shallow grave that your core just like walks in and dies afterwards. Like, no. That was so fast. Those reaction time. Yeah, that was Dog. sick. That was sick. I mean, the thing is, like, they, they get a bunch of kills from it. So just the delaying the death by that much longer does actually matter. Uh, obviously, you would prefer if, like, Mickey just 100% survives there and then you get the puck trade. But the, the grave allows you this. to eventually get the puck trade. Ravage. Like that was Bam. that was like last possible millisecond. He was about to get hit by that tentacle. Very well played. Very good button pushing, but then you stay around just a little bit too long. These things happen. Yeah, to be fair, like Mickey's been playing on the cusp for the entire game. That's what we've seen in both games from both of these Ember Spear players, is just being this annoying mess that's like constantly using slight and playing the perimeter of the fight, so like it's just it's a it's a fine line to tread is all and like we said the margin of error is very small between both of these teams as the level of dota has just gotten better and better every single year everyone just starts getting better and improving especially with these two teams like i i, I genuinely feel like looking at the rosters and especially with the performances we've seen these are like two top top caliber teams right? Misha. He's just going to try to teleport out. I'm not sure if he's going to make it, though. Too much damage coming off of Mr. Toomba. And that's the shard for Taiga that just got sniped. That's a big deal. Tumba Man has to... Oh, he's going to He wants his kill. That's the rest of the team's nearby. Oh, for but he is not going to be able to survive that. Uh, the this is the one downside to SF Carry is how insanely squishy he is, and like, does he feel this way when you're behind? You can't get caught out like that. That's the problem. With that. I don't know. I expected them to be right there, though, the way that Zai just ran in with his face. Lamar should be able to teleport out in time. Was sitting a little bit low here as you can see bcm he was hoping to get this carrier snipe does realize that there are a lot of heroes nearby though so he's going to teleport out i go zai Whoop. there he goes get dragged a little bit closer push him away he's very sundere you know this magnus but taiga will be able to teleport away oh so close for my game uh, i just realized yuragi is not maxing presence of the dark lord he actually has four points in stats and then ta the talent is that so, typical no, I mean, I, no, I don't usually it's Max Presence of the Dark Lord and you're skipping Rays for stats. And like now at this point, we're skipping <laughs> that aura for stats as well. Like at what point are we going zero skills? It can't be that asset, but it's it's just, it's funny how that works. <sighs> and still he's not tanky enough to survive the RP combo. Dyer are scanning for enemies. <laughs> All right. Well, time is a ticking. Liquid go for the smoke play, but uh, also, also see to Misha. He's actually getting closer to that blink dagger. So has to be very careful not to get picked off. Aegis does get reclaimed, but they do see Yeah. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Be able to orb away. Looks like they're still hunting though. Considering still chasing from making its position as they're gonna put pressure on this bottom tower. They have to pushing it and heading the building. 
I love Refresher or Bunraiser. It's so good. You get two links, you get two ults, two plasma fields, which is, you know, all right, but most importantly, uh, two BKBs. And like, you can link the same guy twice and you you just get like, literally double the damage. Unfortunately, you don't steal double the damage, but you do, you do get double the damage, so. You don't actually need to build damage items on Razor to do damage as a carry. Uh, I, I think it's a really good hero. Mickey, about to walk into a, quite a few heroes that were smoked up, but Liquid also laid their own trap here. So G comes up the stair here. Zai walking forward is gonna just blink out. Quite sure about positioning here as the lot of BKB just running down the issue. Don't have to worry about that rabbit at all. As Liquid just continues to just take control of this radiant jungle. Put the pressure. Drawn. I love the items that Liquid have built in this game. They have uh, this Lotus Orb first on Zai, Assange and, uh, or Kai and Assange on Mickey on the mid lane, and so he's able to tank all of these spells. Uh, Boxy's got a Solar Crest, so that's more armor and an AC. Oh, boy, the Pretty close to the best initiation you could ask for from OG. Hitting both Magnus and Weaver, the two like, you know, backlining slash supporting heroes. Uh, you're not hitting the deck for a target for one hero. Like from the uh, The Ravage was really good in that fight, but Tombo didn't have BKB as well. And so, it's still, it's still, it goes the way of Liquid. That, that's gotta feel bad. Flip it a high five here, BZM. Yeah. She's gonna get chased down is Zai versus Mickey. Who could get there first? And then it's gonna be Mickey. Couple of free bounties too, not bad. And all I can think of is that uh, that screenshot of Purge when he's found like what four bounties. Yeah. In his face just. Yeah, the, cra disappointed. the crazy thing about bounty rooms in Dota is that, like, picking up those two bounties there is actually worth more in terms of gold than uh, BZM dying on Puck. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, obviously the, the actual death timer is of supreme value. Like, that means that you can run mid and get that tier 2 uh, tower for relatively free on Team Liquid. And it also lets you control this triangle. Well, this time around, Liquid bringing all the aggression to OG. You know, OG's really kind of just tied into their base. You can see Amar is trying to push out, trying to get to the jungle, trying to get anything that he can, but the rest of the team is struggling. See, now the net worth 17k over on Razor, 14k on Ember, and Puck doing Puck things. Probably the only person who can really about free on Dude, heads up. Like, Look at this. I they know. It. They know. The chase is on after Amar. Slow down, using that plasma field, unleash up there, take him for a little swim, and it's a dead Amar. Shout out to Insania, who placed the word uh, Tiger. Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That, that ward on the top lane, the lane ward, that is the only reason that they were able to see. I, I can't see who placed that. I don't know if it was Insania or Boxy, but whoever placed that is an absolute god, realizing that OG. They're gonna have to run through these lanes and do these cheeky plays to get out of their base. So that's the only reason that they know that Amar is in there. The word belongs to Insania, but... I think so. You can click on it, and then you click on another button. I do that. Because I am going to uh, push back on BZM here on the screen. The zip is on Mickey. He wants his kill boxy. Keeping tabs is gonna go a little bit further. But they needed more lockdown, so... Little 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 dragon. Little and uh, I will say... One good thing going for you right now. Look what Misha has. I don't think it matters. <laughs> I really, it's, you know, it's a five time. So you're going to get this item late, naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you're at a point where there's so 
much tankiness on all of these heroes that at this timing, if you're an offlane type, you'd be waiting for the. Oh god, they just immediately break the spell. Yeah, that's an ember spirit right there. Oof. That feels bad. It's really annoying that it works like that, but it does. Yeah, they're they're too they're too tanky. Uh, He's gonna need to hit like four people for Abbott. Zai getting all the info, seeing himself a Misha, like you said, making that blink deck. Just doesn't do much of anything. Get out, you know? I'll try to buy himself a little bit more time, but the damage coming out from Liquid is too strong. Red Zone! So for Big Game, we'll get through some more Ma too. It's gonna be able to get a kill on a Ma. And they've got Zeb online, so. We'll turn some on BZM, and they'll continue to just rip down the vision. <laughs> I love watching Zai play against heroes like Puck because you know he just he just loves these situations where it's like kind of frame perfect to skewer but to get him out of his spaceship. Like he genuinely enjoys those moments so much that like he can't hide it. You know, it's like it's just so obvious in how he plays. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it makes him a, a, an excellent player. Yeah, this is uh, a bit desperate. You need to like a full combat ravage. Only one ravage is playing to win. Was it worth it for them to? Oh, there's someone dying off screen over here. Uh, that was time ago. Ah, I see. Is it worth it after your smoke is broken to continue going forward in that manner, or do you think they should have reset? I think they're desperate. It's uh, it's hard to, it's hard to make any other call at that point. But he's still alive. He's here, but Jason, they really want this kill. The silence getting used again over here on Boxy, but no one. They'll find him with a final loop, but while they're chasing him, there's a lot of damage happening over here. They take out Daigo, but they're still just running into the base here of OG. They take a tower. And Mickey feels completely unkillable. Once again, I love the itemization from all of Liquid building like this mass minus armor and HP, or this mass like plus armor and HP strat, because these crazy plays where they're diving could actually go punished if they like they, one let up they, they said, all right, this is looking too impossible. We're too far behind. So Liquid, we talked about the window not being open for them in game number one, but in game number two, they definitely fought back. Yeah, they, they looked amazing on all counts. Uh, they all looked like they were... Five seconds remaining. Radiant's turn to burn. Seconds left by my count. The Dire get a ban. Radiance turn to ban. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Dyer's ban now. Radiant's turn to pick. Finally came up for air!
10 seconds. Five seconds remaining. Dyer's turn to be Invoker. Pound for pound competition is looking good on both sides. The grizzled veterans that make up Team Liquid and the young bucks that are making up OG, who's got the stamina, who's got the technique to take this game number three. I think, Sin, you kind of alluded to one of the things that I found which may be a exploit that you could take advantage of is we have not seen ATF play from behind yet. This was a game that he didn't even get a chance to recover, even if I'm sure he's eminently capable of it. Mm -hmm. But shutting him down early on had some impressive success. It's also going to look a little bit more extreme when the hero you shut him, shut him down on his slaughter. Yeah. Like, that's just... That hero in bad matchups and losing lane is one of the worst heroes in the game. Yes. I genuinely think it's almost unplayable. Not only was his lane bad, then he's, he's playing from behind and he's against Ember, which is one of the hardest counters. I mean, the hero just doesn't really have a comeback mechanic, right? It's comeback mechanic because he kills you or he kills Roche. Yeah. Roche is hard to do when you're really far behind. Mm -hmm. Killing enemy heroes is only good if other of your heroes are super far ahead who can kind of enable it for you, but otherwise, yeah, you're just sitting there with your bash. I mean, why you use this? <laughs> Sitting there with that number three <laughs> above your buffs, and you're like, one day, one day I'm gonna slap someone. And Liquid, I gotta pick up Five a Kaka to do some me. slapping with, uh, banning out the Timber and the Mars, targeting ATF. And OG ban out Spear Breaker IO, pick up a first phase Invoker. First pick Invoker. First pick yeah, not only first phase. That's, uh, it's a Siggy. I feel like it's been a while back. since Invoker has been in a position where he's overall first pick. Or maybe that's not true, actually. There was a patch pre TI when some teams were rating it that high. Um, but first pick is pretty bold though. Um, I mean, yeah. we at TI did have some scrims and stuff where we first phased Invoker. Uh, I think you get two, three, it, you can take it on the four response. First pick is a different beast though. You're you're just showing the whole, you're showing a whole lane because almost no teams are going to play this on rolls other than mid. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to put it in a side lane, right? It's pretty rare you ever really do. It's like you get brooded or something, all right? We have to go side lane. And otherwise, seconds. you're showing a hero that 100% is going mid, 100% which player is playing it. Five seconds. You just take your pick, and most people are going to take either Kunkka, as we see here, or Void Spirit, I think are the two highest, uh, outside of some cheese. Mm -hmm. So it's just here's a matchup. And since their first pick, you're just going to get counter picked on both your side lanes down the road, too, if Liquid really wants to, right? Is so, is Kunkka really an insta pick, or are you just saying it because you saw it? Like, because uh, I imagine that the idea no, is, it, if I first pick Invoker, I want to railroad them into countering it immediately, so no, I already know what the it, It's is. up there. Okay. I think most mid, the two highest it's mids that most back. players would feel super comfortable counter picking an Invoker in terms of the lane and gameplay being like maximized is mm -hmm. probably Void Spirit and Kunkka. Okay. Just because they both do exceptionally well on the early waves, they'll always be ahead, and they both have a pseudo gap close mechanism for Invoker mm -hmm. as a core, which is insanely valuable because the most annoying thing about this hero <laughs> we're talking about Quas Wex which is what it is most of the time though BZM mostly plays at Xord I think is that remaining. if your core can start on Invoker for yourselves it helps interacting that with that hero by a huge now. margin because most subs are really bad at just running up to Invoker and casting spells on right. they get outranged or disrupted or they take an immense amount of damage in the process so Kunk and Void Spirit both just start on him and they're heroes that can chip him, so he's a bit low in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, historically, they're two of the most favorite matchups. There's even the added benefit in this patch of picking Kunkka here, that if you do see an amazing other mid-hero later, you can put Kunkka safely. Because yeah. that's something that wasn't popular even just a few months ago, but now that Kunkka fares well in that lane, it's just it, this almost feels like a no-brainer to just grab Kunkka here, it's just good. I mean, it's outplayed in the offlane, too. Yeah, so, yeah, even and for like... the shard play. and pull people back. back and, yep. But they do get the Bane, which is... Maybe you see these reversed. I mean, this is also a question of, is taking this Bane on four and Invoker on one that much better than Bane on one and Invoker on four? I don't know. I, I don't know if they're worried that Liquid were going to grab Invoker one, two, or if they got a really good trade out of this. Because I think if OG grab Bane first pick, if Liquid do pick these two heroes, Kunkka Weaver, then you can just opt out of the Invoker and get something that's better. Yeah. Well, or... that, that's what I'm saying. So now they know the mid lane matchup. So now you're just like, okay, our invoker is going to have a miserable time against Kanka, but we know it's Kanka. So let's just focus all of our energy into making sure this Kanka, this mid lane counter is not going to be able to pop off. Yeah, it's easier said than done, though. 
Uh, I think usually the way you really counter Gunka is in the lane. Because um, he, do he does have some matchups in mid where he fares poorly. Like, if Gunka loses lane, the hero's recovery curve is really steep. Um, but he... He definitely doesn't lose to Invoker. Like, let's let's imagine you pick Kunkka early and you don't know your enemy mid matchup. Okay. And the enemy team can somehow guarantee that Kunkka goes mid. You could be playing against SF, you could be playing against Razor, you could be playing against these heroes that dominate melee mids or Timbersaw, you know? Uh, Viper, I think, also does extremely well against Kunkka. The Necro ones. Necrophos, uh, yeah. Death Prophet is the there are There are, like, almost 10 mid heroes that destroy Kunkka if they play very well, or at least win clearly. Invoker is just not one of them. Um, so if you want to counter Kunkka out now, I think, yeah, Bane is a start because then you have some sort of a combo break against the X-Mark mechanic. So if you clutch, maybe you can avoid uh, the x tarn boat. Um, but again, it just begs the question, why give them this opportunity so that you need to catch up? If you're first pick, you need to be dictating the draft in the first phase. That's the only advantage you have. Right. The next two phases, you're going to get counterpicked in the end. Um, and I think right now in Dota, there isn't like... There isn't a big enough pool of heroes in the first phase that are just so good that you getting to choose the absolute first and the last one it gives you a big enough advantage that you can comfortably take it. I think you were looking at it before this game as well. You think second pick is better and it has high win rate right now? Yeah, it has higher win rate. You, and teams are favoring it too. Yeah, I mean, I favored it for a long time. I just think these picks on 8 and 10 are... They're hard to overcome if your first phase isn't asserting something that forces a response. Radiant Otherwise, the enemy just has too many options. Um, I mean, just to talk about the benefits. So, Invoker, I'm assuming BZM is going to play the x yeah. which he traditionally does. So, one thing is, Bane is already a Sunstrike setup to some degree. Yep. And I think this is how you abuse it and get out of the bad matchups, right? Because you can go into this and say, oh, Kunkka's favorable matchup. I mean, you might be able to even play this matchup to a better degree than we think. but. Even so, he gets one or two Sunstrike kills, he gets to his Midas, Midas a camp. You can catch up a net worth pretty fast with this hero. And the matchup isn't that debilitating in terms of you have to load through your other lanes, right? So I would really like to see him make these side lanes his catch-up mechanic. So he's not just put on an island, there's nothing else happening on the map. It's also a fair point, like maybe our perspective on this matchup, Kunkka versus Invoker, is kind of guided by the fact that almost everyone was playing Quaswex. Yeah. So in the phase that that was the case, maybe Exhort Invoker can break even. And if that's the case, then maybe OG feel like, well, in this meta, we have a star player mid that plays this hero exceptionally well. Uh, he's not scared of anything except, like, maybe Brood, which you can't first phase. I mean, who knows? Maybe no one's, even, no one's <laughs> even playing Brood. Maybe but... you can if you first pick Invoker. Like, maybe you could Brood Force and Force the meta now? the side lane is good enough. Like, I don't know. The but... first fade Invoker Brood trade? Yeah. You know, we're at... <laughs> We've been there before, I think. I mean, they might also time. play it for. There that is true. Players. Uh, I would say Taiga is a player who... Taiga could... He might play, you know. It that was quite the curveball. Yeah. Seen crazier things, but... Yeah. Dyer's turn to... <laughs> Liquid are still expecting... Now I don't think he's... Playing. Okay. <laughs> you don't think BZM plays mid Dark Bowl? <laughs> you never know. Team Liquid Classic. Uh, one of the teams I feel like that's been most consistently happy with picking Enigma. Um, they've played it in different metas for different reasons when other teams didn't like it so much. They, they tend to gravitate toward this hero as a position four that has been given priority. So that's kind of how they played with Boxy and Taiga together, was that Taiga would play Enigma and Boxy would play a three in quotation marks. So that three would start out the lane while Enigma was in creeps. And then as soon as the three became independent, Enigma would either just hard go jungle and farm or would start taking the lane and the other hero would roam like they did with Sanking. Um, I wonder what they're seeing here that really prompts the Enigma pick. You're playing against a BKB counter in Bane, uh, which is the only counter currently. It's not particularly a counter against anything with a percentage-based damage of Midnight Pulse, which is usually a big part of why you pick the hero against heroes like Alchemist or uh, Centaur, Bristleback, these kind of super tanky boys. So. Uh, remains to be seen. This this is not a hero I would have thought of in this spot at least. The only thing that strikes me is it's a way to dodge this Bane Luna dual lane, fight them straight up, right? And right. Nick generally a hero that doesn't play the lane straight up. He tends to dodge Here's them the by the mechanic of, of denying half your creeps. The lane's super far back. I don't have to, my stuff doesn't have to fight you on the side. We don't have to contest a huge amount of these CS in terms of the two on two. Do you know how so, well that works nowadays after the nerf to conversion? I think it's cooldowns quite a lot longer. Right? I mean, it's definitely a nerf, but it can pan out better than you'd think. Okay. I think look, when I originally looked at the numbers, it's like, oh, this hero just has been killed by Ice Frog. <laughs> but I think when you actually play it, it can feel okay for the core Nigma player. But you have to be in a position where you're also 
it's not just deny one creep with conversion and then nothing else happens. I think it's denying creep with conversion and you're also denying one or two others with the bonus damage from the summons because they don't have a summons clear, right? Right. Which is the advantage on this lane. Luna, Bane, both single target. <laughs> it's pretty hard for them to kill Eidolons. Once those Eidolons are level two plus, they're not clearing them basically ever on the lane. Five they're really powerful. Remaining. It's really hard to fight them and I think when this new gets to five, if he go, he can go an HOD build, he might even go, he might just go with Midas Bling, something like this, but these level three conversions are pretty strong. No one's really fighting them in this early game, and people tend to underestimate them. So this lane phase is the one upside I see for him, but in general, yeah, his his black hole or his team fight, there's nothing that sticks out incredibly to me. I think it's generally can be difficult to black hole but we're looking at four ranged heroes right now. Yeah. Um, and I think OG's lineup is also very poke based, right? There's nothing that commits in the fight that, <laughs> oh, they commit in. Now I can commit my hole as a counter initiator. It's very, we're throwing brambles on you, we're throwing some sleeps and, and feebles. There's a sun strike, maybe there's some four spirits hitting you, there's a beam. It's, it's actually just an entire poke based lineup, right? So those lineups can tend to be very hard for Nemo because he likes heroes that commit in, so he can commit back. I guess one one upside to Enigma is that, based on what we've seen uh, Amar play so far, I was okay. I was thinking maybe they go Underlord, but my big question mark about that is how does that play into Enigma? Because now you that's a really good midnight pulse target, right? Um, that's one upside to picking Enigma against this team is that everything we've seen from Amar so far gets countered by Enigma. Right? They're all melee heroes that build tanky items and or just gravitate toward a tankiness playstyle uh, that now will run in and be in the center of the fight and be exposed against Enigma. But like you said, a lot of it happens around the Underlord now, yep. so it's maybe not the biggest issue. He does get the percent burn, burn versus the Kunkka, and the Pit is yeah. obviously pretty annoying for their lineup right now in terms of both their subs have a mobility spell and you just throw the AoE down in front of your Luna Invoker, it gives them a lot of static control in the fight that they were lacking a bit, right? Something to back them up with some auras, some team fights, some extra HP. You throw this alacrity on the Luna, now she's hitting pretty hard. You're hitting a little worse because you have Underlord on aura on you. So it makes it harder to pick a counter carry matchup here too, right? It's, it's also a really good Dark Rift game, isn't it? Defensively. Yep. <laughs> yes, it is. You're playing against a lineup that has Kunkka Boat as well as Black Hole. Oh, you can get X back. You can. So you can get X back Which on traditionally is a <laughs> pretty true. Yeah, but if that you X the one Luna back or something, you yeah. feel pretty bad, right? Now you're all stuck in base and your carry died. But then you just nightmare the X pull. I mean, it's too next level for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's you, probably not. you get the Ags on a Lord on a good back. Yeah. Rift them back out. Yeah, then you just make the portal first. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it, what's actually going to happen is a final pick Wraith King. Matu picks it up. Um, picking a, another kind of strength, high HP carry against an Underlord, though. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit surprised by this pick because I think you're setting up Underlord a little bit for success in this lane. It's one of the better heroes against Wraith King. The Skeletons die, you get a lot of plus damage. Uh, you just see us very well in the lane. Uh, so I'm looking for the primary reason why they would grab this from like a timing perspective for their entire lineup. Maybe it just fits in with the plan they have of when they want to peak. This makes me think Enigma is not going Midas BKB, but maybe rather some sort of mid-game oriented style where they want to try to put pressure. Um, I'm not sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit on pick. Traditionally, I wouldn't think of Wraith King into that. I don't know where it is no. being too great. Is, is there it? anything that uh, makes the second life valuable? It will be probably an Axe Sword Invoker that you guys were saying, so probably don't need to worry about your mana burn. For I mean, I also... Well, eventually, though. Eventually. Yeah, I also am not sure about the second life being that valuable, because like I said, I think OG's entire lineup is just long-ranged, pokey spells that aren't that committal. And generally, when you think of Wraith King, you think of high committal spells in terms of a Black Hole or a Doom or something like yeah. this. But what is OG committing to kill? Especially if this Luna go gets to the point where she has the shard and she has beam talents. It seems like a nightmare for Wraith King to, to, to fight into. Yeah, I would say just anecdotally, Invoker is one of the worst matchups for Wraith King. Yeah, the early main Ice Ball, Tornado, Cold Snap. Definitely of the last disarm. Yeah. We can pull it off. It's time for game number three with Moxie and Jenkins. The question mark that is Enigma in this game. What Prepare do you see happening for here? Uh, well, I actually really like the Enigma versus any of these like Medusa slash Luna type heroes because usually what you have is some sort of lineup that is just like based on amplifying that one hero. Mm -hmm. And if you Midnight Pulse Black Hole a Luna, like she is 100% going to die. And Bane is the only thing that can interrupt it through uh, through that BKB currently. So I think the Enigma is, the Enigma is good if you can uh, get into that late game and. That to me is kind of where I see the Wraith King coming in because you would th you think on like surface level that 
it's a bit of a weird pick against the Underlord, where you're supposed to lose that lane to him because the damage he gets from the skeletons. Mm -hmm. But I think he's just a hero to like run in like a psychopath for <laughs> Zai to get his holes off. So you think it's going to be more of just like a very tanky in your face sort of thing, or because it, it does feel like they're it's like the Kunkka usually is, provides that role, right? Yeah, uh, Kunkka definitely does that. I think Kunkka goes for the like. Uh, tanky, frontlining, like BKB armlet build, uh, whereas Wraith King, like, yes, you're gonna go for an armlet, but then also there's Blink, there's like Silver Edge. So it's more like a hero that's gonna run, run around on the map and like make fights start in like a different way from a Kunkka. Like, they both do it, which that's the perfect game for Enigma, right? It's like you want multiple ways of just having some chaos happen and then you abuse yeah, that. Yeah, a couple different entry points. So yeah, like. exactly. It's, it, it's all about those entry points. Okay. It'll be interesting to see how it all goes down because I assume, you know, like you said, if the Wraith King does run in with a space, does have to be very, very careful, uh, obviously. But if they are slow, they're trying to move away from the reincarnation, perhaps get the perfect black hole. But who knows? It is Zai playing the Enigma, of course. So this guy is no stranger to the hero and uh, might have been a good player as well. So weird build, Quelling Blade, and oh, nice little Sunstrike on the range creep. Some style points right there, you know? Yeah, very nice. I mean, May as well use that early mana on Quasting Sword Invoker. It's not like you're really going to use it for early Forge Spirits or something like that, or Cold Snap. It just doesn't do anything. <laughs> but it's, it is a lot of poke, right, coming out from the side of OG. Nice. Yes. It's, it's, it's going to have to be very, very well set up. 100%. 100%. SVG's read on that was... That's a, a really good read, and I, I think that... Perhaps that's why Wraith King was also picked up. Hmm. You know, you say like Kunkka already fulfills that role of starting team fights, uh, but maybe it's like, okay, when you, there's this much poke on OG, <laughs> it cannot just be a Kunkka. Like we need more. So that that at least the, to me that makes sense mm -hmm. for picking this hero. Yeah. Yeah, forward here over on Taiga. Level two timing. It's a lot of damage. Good lord, he's worth use that very far. Oh, he's he's the first blood going to the Sadia. And a little set to move. Really well played by Liquid, uh, pushing the lane out like this, so that way they get level two and uh, killing Taiga. I think if Taiga gets level two there, if OG has level two, and it's just a two v two worth their all two, there's no kill that happens there. Like that's the one small window where you can take an advantage in that lane. So really well played by them. DM is running away with the CS here right now over in this mid lane. 12 and 2 on the Invoker, 6 and 1 on Mickey. I mean, it's kind of expected though, right? It's always going to be a little bit more difficult trying to last hit against the uh, range exhort hero. But I... I feel like Kunkka has traditionally been considered an Invoker counter, but... Maybe it's more of like you'll dumpster a plus wax invoker. Yeah, I feel like BZM is just playing this really well. It's just his laning, I mean, yeah, his laning is just really good. We saw in the previous series, he did extremely well in his laning stage as well, so. There's that sun strike coming in early, a little bit off the mark though. Damn. Yeah, we'll get clicked a bit. Yeah, that might have actually been a kill if the um, coordination between them was a little bit tighter. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> Next time. It, it, you it's know, early. It's only three we'll minutes into the game. Well, uh, you know. Well, if, if, if you're an invoker, like, the thing is, if you're a Quas Exhort, you're not really spending your mana, like, pressing things that much in lane anyway. Right. So you have a, a good amount of mana regen if you're going for, like, Null Tallies or Bassy or, like, one of these items. So you may as well use it for these, like, Fish Sun Strikes and, you know, Sun Strike and Range Creeps and stuff like that. What's the point is that it's sitting at 100%. <laughs> BZM, <sighs> a lot of damage. He's gonna have to teleport out. This doesn't feel very good to have to leave your lane, especially when you felt like, you know, you're doing pretty well in that lane. Yeah, and uh... He's gonna walk back. Quest Exhort, yeah, probably doesn't have boots. Not not great at, like, walking back to lane, but, you know, you'd rather that than to, to go down there, for sure. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be giving the uh, other mid laner any sort of advantage. Right. Taga in both of these games, is just like going tons of mangoes. Insania, too. You can see he picked up four of them. I think he started with six. So it's interesting. Seven tangos? Yep. My dude had nine tangos to start. All right. I was expecting a lot of harass, clearly. This is like the extension of the support meta that we've been seeing so far, which is just 
buying a ton of regen and carry starting with literally nothing. Um, this is what it's come to. Just constantly feeding different types of regen to your core at yeah. all times. Wait, Soul Ring? That's cool. Okay, so nine tangos on Insania, and that lets Matumba Man have a Soul Ring for just spamming this lane. I don't think remember the last time that I saw Soul Ring Wraith King. That's crazy. That is not something common. Nice here. I'm just gonna pop boxing a little nightmare. They are aware that there is a sentry, although it looks like they were aware previously, since it's at half health. So it's gonna make the shenanigans of Boxy a little bit more difficult as Yuragi will punish him. Skip off a couple of these clicks and I'll use some beam. Got flame for Zai. Uh, you know, he's getting a lot of denies, as you uh, will with Enigma, but. Bane with the Luna Aura and the Luna who's going to be like, you, you know, glaving your Eidolons. Yuragi taking a lot of damage though. He sat for a long time with that Midnight Pulse and don't get a kill. Well, that's one way to turn it. Is, is literally he, kill them while they're killing your Eidolons. Boxy, he wants this kill. He does. He does that he's got that creep there, but Misha, gonna be just fine. Yeah, that feels bad. Enigma is definitely not supposed to be getting kills at this point. And then that's on a Catapult Wave. So that's going to be a bit of, yeah, bit of pressure on the tower here. Um, Zy alone probably no. can't do that much. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to tank for the way that. Little lane have a little bit of a gank over on VZM. It's like they're not going to die if the tower tigers make his way in. The side strike coming in. We'll land over onto Boxy. He's a sensual flame. Not missing that one. Yeah, that, that's Zai. stylish. Drop the Midnight Pulse, realizing that, you know, he's all alone here. We'll put the Nightmare out, put a little damage on the Eidolons. A little bit more. Should have a Lucent Beam up in a second. They won't even need it. It's going to be Misha who gets the final hit on Zai. That's, that's more in line with, the, with you know, how I thought that lane should go. It's about to flounder. <laughs> Any heroes that are, like, you know, totally comfortable just running out and right-clicking your Eidolons, it feels really bad to play against as Enigma. Because um, they kind of keep you alive by being right. that threat, but... They can just run past them, because you can just glaive them down, right click them, do high armor heroes too. Makes sense. Again, it just seems like we have this little personal side battle going on between Taiga and Sania, but that's allowing a lot of space for both of these cores to be able to go and hit creeps. <laughs> Yanamar's taking a bit of a lead because, you know, as the panel pointed out, Underlord, very good against a hero who's just giving him that constant, like, huge damage buffs with the skeletons. And if you're not using the skeletons on Raid King in order to prevent that, well, then you're not using your, yeah, one of your primary abilities. Yeah, I keep finding the kill on Boxy in the bottom lane. The Sentry Ward's been helping out quite a bit, it seems, as Misha also taking a decent amount of damage from Enigma. But that uh, off. Need to heal up a little. You know, Zai is one of the number one players I think that I've seen where he like plays really aggressive right before getting six. Okay, so I didn't do it this game, but he'll play really aggressive right before getting six, mm -hmm. and then he'll black hole somebody who's not expecting it. Like I, I always see him get early kills on Enigma. He's actually going for a point. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean, I respect it. You know, Zai is one of those people that's going to be able to make something weird and work. Set the meta, so. Yeah, both of these offlaners just don't build normal items. They refuse. I love it, though. It makes it so much more fun to watch. Trying to guess, like, what's their next item? Why are they building that? And then seeing it all unfold. It's ability. cool because it, it makes certain heroes viable to do these, you know, different builds. Misha making this rotation to the top lane with the sun strike. Bramble's holding in place, but Kakid is not going to save your life here. Taiga gets killed. Mickey, though, they have vision. They know he's here. He just keeps running around in circles. They take it out. Okay. Like Probably just gonna head back. This is giving BZM a lot of chase here in this mid lane. And allow to push him out and it wastes Radiant's a little bit of a Mickey's time here. Yeah, so this this rotation that they do towards the top lane is more a result of knowing that Zai on the bot lane with the black hole, it, it's very likely that he's going to be played towards. He's going to use that to get a kill. So like why bother sending someone down there to die to it when you can just like pressure Radiant's the other side of the map. Uh, although OG's not really getting any tower damage here because their heroes are not great at 
doing tower damage, it, it, it would be the Luna it yeah. needs to go there, but... You know, at this point, Aluna's not exactly comfortable doing that. Tower faces a She's wheel. not there yet, so this bottom tower taking a lot of damage should fall to the Nigma, so I will get that. And that opens up the jungle quite a bit, so Boxy, doing Boxy things here, just trying to be as annoying as possible. Take away the farm from Yoragi, and they do have some nice wards here to keep tabs. Look, at you've got a couple of the entryways into this point of the jungle, just warded up. So that way they can keep an eye on what Yuragi is doing, if there's any stacks, and if they need to invade. I gotta, I, I gotta talk about the the, uh, the orchid enigma because it's, it's it's so strange. Unfortunately, you can't micro the skeletons to take that off. Of no, that'd but, be great. Yeah, that'd be convenient. Um, remember when people were going necrobuck enigma, and it, it was kind of like you do this pairing of using the Malefice, uh, the stun duration to like get a ton of necro damage. Mm -hmm. like, Enigmas actually not that bad of a single target hero as long as you've like something to actually benefit from the Malefice. So I'm kind of thinking like maybe that's the concept here. That you get the Orchid and in the Malefice you can do so much damage because nobody's gonna like turn and fight you, you know, dur during a Malefice. Right. Uh, it's like you put all the Eidolons on, maybe have like a plus one. Like if you do Orchid and then black hole somebody because of the percentage damage, like they're going to die 100%. Uh, it also is like an early game item that lets you have mana regen that's not just like soul ring or mana boots. It gives you that like permanent full mana. Is he gonna use it? Yeah, he is. Tiger, 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 you're not escaping this time. So, the big thing for why the Necro Book and why this Orchid is good on Enigma is because around the black hole, when you don't have it, you still have kill threat. Right. That's that's the idea behind it. And so all of those other things that I mentioned, plus the fact that you're going to be a useful hero without the black hole, I think is why you built it. Amar's across a little bit too far, a little bit too deep, but they do have mix on strike, it doesn't matter. It's just three heroes on one little Amar. Is under attack. And now he's dead. Making his blade structures now. are cool. yep. So that is for the untargetable damage of Underlord, Luna, Invoker to a degree who's going to be, you know, meteoring you. Pretty smart idea. Yeah, amazing. Like amazing Blade Mount game. Really good. Yeah, I like the idea, like you said, just to revisit the, uh, the Orchid on Enigma. We have this problem on a lot of the big teamfight heroes, right? You have this issue on specifically like Tidehunter. That's one of the heroes Which that... Which is why you get nags on Tide. Right, or you, you know, you build very tanky utility sort of things, so you still You're have... You're a tank, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've got another purpose besides just an alt, and I think the, the concept of having that Orchid, like said, really smart um, and a good way to maximize the usage yep. of the hero. And I, I think that works because of the Malefist talent at level 10. I think there's a couple of Malefist talents that you can get now on Enigma. And so they bump up the damage, the stun duration, and so it's a legit spell now. Really legit. Hi, opening up with that cursed crowd as the Bedlam knows that Zai can't really do much right just yet. Final uh, Sun Strike from BZM will secure the kill. Or could not exactly paying off in that scenario, but you can see that Zai was really ready. Like, if the Sun Strike doesn't come out, he was going to turn an Orchid, plus, like, hit with the Eidolons. And I think you can actually kill these subs if you if you Malefist them, especially once you get that level 10 talent. It's like, it, it's perma stun. I think it was just one of those situations where he wasn't expecting everyone to be there. I no, he was. A little bit of play here in this mid lane. A good terrorize coming out from Taiga. Follow up the beans drift. They should be able to obliterate the gang. So he's not going to be a part of this fight. Zai sitting on the back lines here. Dyer's not have that ultimate just yet. They get Nikkei's courier on top of that. So a lot of damage mentally and physically in the game going out there against yeah, Nikkei. He's not feeling too good about that one. No. Great positioning for Misha, wrapping around like that. He wasn't expecting that. He saw all of these heroes like hiding behind the tower and playing towards the right side. He was not expecting a fiend's grip to just like come from above. They kind of pincered him there and uh, yeah, he was trapped. Is under attack. Couldn't get the boat off. No, he couldn't. He couldn't get much of anything off, honestly. Dude, Mars build. He has no points in W. He's even like considering going for the talent at level 10. Do I need this? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. I see you, Amar. I see you. Just doing it to keep you on your toes, Jenkins. I mean, this is like a it's such a greedy build. I feel like Amar in general is like is such a greedy style offlaner, but he's he's high skill enough that he has leads, and when you have a lead, you should play like a more core style of offlane. 
Kaiga getting poked here by Bob. She doesn't have any mana really to do a whole heck of a lot. She's gonna go for the shadow rope. They're trying to just hold up and blaze here with those kisses. They rain down some hellfire. They'll eventually find the kill on Kaiga. The tips. Zai's going for BKB next. Uh, you know what? All, the Orchid could also be. Well, I mean, you can just build a Lincolns for this if you really care, but to, to a degree, it counters the Bane countering of the Black Hole, because if you go into a fight, you could Orchid the Bane, and then, you know. I feel like the targeting has to be so, like, you'd have to be so fast and you'd have to be able to see everything, right, yeah. in order to get that off. Because, like, that was also a thought in my mind, but I was like, that's so hard it's a, to well, actually... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option, though. It's an option. It is an option. And uh, the, the more options you have, the more to put out. Okay, okay. Go again, there's just too much damage. So a Mar a Mar goes for this casual helm and then builds into Atos. So the helm to him is just like a laning, like a lane dominance item. And Underlord is actually a pretty low armor hero at uh, early level. So getting that helm does uh, does help you more than a ring of health, I think. You'd think he'd be armored like a tank. Yeah, but you know, there's also like Weaver minus armor, Snapfire sure, well, minus armor. They have a lot of ways to reduce the armor. Yeah, so definitely more value than a Ring of Health. But it, it's closer these days with the nerfs to Helm. It used to be like Helm was just the best item for laning in general as an offlaner, but now it's sometimes people go for a casual Ring of Health. Zai did it in the last game. Atos is completed though for Amar now, so they've got more, multiple ways of being able to catch. Using echolocation. It's weird having the Atos with only level 2 pit though. It's not that big of a stun duration. Like usually, you, you, or uh, root duration, you you want that pit to be maxed out. But and he's super farmed because of his build. Is it? Just, yeah, I was about to say. Is this just something that he did specifically for laning for farming? Because you said he's very greedy. So if you're able to oh, tiger walk and into quite a few uh, of liquid again, and they'll find themselves kick off on Mickey while this is happening. So I think you're happy with that, especially because they don't end up getting the kill on Tiger and they get the kill on mid instead. Yeah, Mickey's having a, a tough time this game. Um, just the grip pair. Oh, God. Oh, oh there's okay. the combo. Yeah, he went right into that, so. Oxy collecting the kill to get the nightmare off over on Snapfire. Need a little bit more damage. They'll jump forward. Oh, the black hole, though, coming out from his eye. Won't be able to hold the invoker in place. And they should have more than enough damage to take down these damage, but they'll also be able to take down Zai. Roxy is trying to put out some more damage using those little bugs. You can see that uh, Matu was starting to join into the fight. Everyone's just going to back off, and while this is happening, Yuragi continues to farm. Not top of the net worth, though, by any means. Closing in on that BKB, though, that'll be a big timing for them. Misha finding himself a little bug. Kaido looking to some plays here, throws down the Bramble, throws down the Terrorize, does have a Mar following up here, Ray Fire Blast will connect over on Taiga, the Zidelon giving a lot of vision, the X-Marks is about to get the Dragon right back in again, they've got the Snapfire Kisses, they'll get the kill, very nicely done by Zide, have Foresight to move the Eidolon to keep that vision. As ITV's towards the top lane, no Black Hole, so... He's kind of mode chill. Whenever you have Enigma oh, Tidehunter on your team, the the way that you play the game, the timings that you play for are fairly obvious. It's literally the cooldowns. Um, on the flip side, it's easy to play around those as well. If you're OG, you know that like you can farm aggressively like this if you're your Augie and you're a lot safer because there is no huge black hole coming in. But with that being said, Zai doesn't have a blink dagger yet, so I suppose it's not that much of a threat until that point. No BKB as well, so it is interruptible. There's ways to deal with it. I mean, it feels like a lot of the times when these black holes are going off, it's mostly OG kind of walking into battle, and it allows for Zai to get into that position uh, to help get those sort of pickoffs. Ooh, that's a big crit here, Misha. So chill out, Matsu, take a nap. I am going to run like heck, and Boxy says, yeah, no, you're not allowed to do that. Come on, Mark. Let's say they're going to be able to get fever. No, they have the bug on shot. Get the kill on Misha, so find themselves a kill on Taiga. Just like that, Liquid marches into the Roche Pit. Sunstrike comes out, they're just keeping tabs, but I don't know if they can actually fight this with two heroes being down. Both sides not going to be part of the fight. They do have, like, chip heroes, though. You, yeah. They both, for sure. I, I agree with it. Like, I agree with Liquid being careful here, because... 
Still no black hole for another 60 seconds. Still in the boat out. Up over here, BZ of the Gaki Eclipse of BKB coming up from Mickey. Matu sitting a little bit low as Iraqi's running for his life. Like Amar's gonna try to just Uber himself out of the situation, doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. Actually cancels it because the rest of the team, they're back up. A little low on Mana on a couple of heroes. They're making their way back and starting to strike. Oh, very close to Matu as he was shifting with that armlet. That genuinely could have been broken. That could have been a death right there, Amal. Well, well, at least the reincarnation, right? I, I, I think you I think you could actually lose Roche with that reincarnation. Taiga again. Snap practice are already up again, my goodness. Oh please. <laughs> yeah, okay. just like no no. Please no. That is that is just a support classic. You're like literally supposed to be immune and you you just die. It is ridiculous how far that Snapfire can be. Like, yeah. It's completely off the screen and you just see these kisses coming in. Well, now got the Roche, though. Now that's that cool down. Ma too, though, very forward. They've got a little bit of history. It's going to be a nice beat. Boxy is the first to draw. They'll chase after BZM Blood Boxy clicking away. It looks like they're going to try to get enough damage over to Zyde with the Fed Lender as the Sucks are coming in. But they'll have the losing time before the reincarnation does get popped up onto BZM trying to run away. It's not looking like he's going to be able to use this invoker. It will fall as Ma now. Running away from Yuragi, running away from the bar. They have so much damage. They pop the BKBs. They want to make sure that they can get this, but it's really hard to get their hands on Matsu. He's just shifting tonally so well, but eventually he will fall to Yuragi. Yeah, these these fights are crazy. I mean, Dyer's Zai not really being able to get the black hole off is Dyer's always going to be the main problem in fights. Fallen. That that is just the nature of any Enigma game. So. Taiga going in and being that annoying backline disrupting hero. Like, sure, he goes in and he dies, but he gets a kill on Zai. And more importantly, even if he didn't, he disrupts the most important hero in the team fight, which is Zai with that black hole. Um, once Zai has BKB and Blink Dagger, it's a little bit harder to do that for Taiga. But in that fight, like, what a pain. Look at Taiga, just go straight to the right, just go straight for Zai. And all of this is allowed to happen because he's just over there being this annoying nuisance. These fights are just so split, too. Like, people were not in the right positions, I think, for Liquid. I don't know if they were necessarily expecting it to happen. Um, I would say that they were not. I think they were, like, because... Uh, so? They're yeah. just so spread apart, though, this entire time. Like, you saw, like, Kunkka, like, but, it was nowhere near this. But Insania was standing on the high ground. Like, they knew that some sort of smoke play was coming, True. and they and they broke it. it it's just the BZM, it, like a maniac, just blinks in. He just goes in, giving vision for his team because he has that BKB. Oh dear. Okay, there it is. There's the BKB. He's coming up from Mickey, coming up from Azai. Look at the positioning though here on Misha. They're trying to get enough damage over on to Amar. They'll turn their attention and they just blow up Insania thanks to that BKB. They're chasing over onto the back line. Zai goes in for the black hole. And Misha, though, look at this positioning ready and just anytime he needs to coming in there with the fiends. Good terrorize coming through. You're on me though. Very, very Gets the final hit as they're gonna try to get out of there in a hurry. Boxy can't do anything about this. They catch their Uber and they leave the area. It looks like Tiger though. He's missed the, missed the car. You said sail. Now, a tumble man going down there is the is the big problem, and then your Augie doesn't end up going down. <laughs> Can you imagine being my? Dude, watching these glaze bounce around, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, he tried, he tried. He tried so hard, and he almost made it, but it's a little bit too tough. Nice nightmare, just to dodge. This is a very, like, neck and neck game number three. This is what I like to see, Jenkins. Yeah, it kind of Dota that's exciting. It could, it could go either way, and, you know, once again, it, it's just, it's all about Zai with the black hole. Um, and then on the flip side, it's about Misha with the cancel, too. <laughs> so Zai already couldn't hit an ideal black hole in that fight because without the blink dagger and just the fact that he was kind of the guy that was in the front and got gone on, he couldn't get a great black hole off. With the blink, that'll be different. But Misha also being there for the grip is like, even if he has blink in black hole uh, with the BKB, then you're you're still going to get that interrupted. But if he Watch. can get down a Yuragi, he can, they can win the fight for sure. Watch the way that Misha moves in these fights. Like, that's one thing that, like, I'm constantly trying to keep in the corner of my eye, is that 
He's always so close by the Uraki, just enough that, you know, he's not necessarily going to get hit with a black hole, but he knows what he, the assignment is. He understands the assignment. It's to protect Uraki to make sure that they cannot get the black hole off and hold this Luna into place, because Luna, you know, the majority of their big damage. And so it's very interesting to see his positioning the entire time. Yeah, you know, this... As I say that, though, you know, he's very far forward here. He's gonna get trapped by Matu, but the Aegis has already picked up. His job is done, and they're gonna start chasing. They have their eyes on this Red King Nikkei. I'll get to be a little bit careful when he pulls the blade mail. For the first time where we're gonna see Matu fall on Mark. Taking a lot of damage over here because the rest of his team is having to yes, scatter. Yes, and they'll find the kill on Tiger, they'll get the kill on Monty, though. Amar just manning up on the back lines here. They'll get the silence for Giha coming out from Insania, and he ends up paying for murdering the king, but. Did Amar just go in? Yes, he did. Against five and yeah, well, maybe not five, but uh, he did just be fine after that raid. Well, I was just I was just looking at like the the death ticker and I see Amar killed Matu and I look and he's just totally alone with three heroes surrounding him and it's like, what? I'm sure if you ask nicely, maybe we can get a replay. I don't know, I don't know if we can. That was it was like off. It was so unexpected. It was just off camera. It was definitely you could see him just duking it out with everybody. Get a replay of the mini map. That, that would be <laughs> that'd be ideal here. All right. Well, the Aegis is still on the Luna. It looks like they're gonna start putting pressure on this bottom area of the map. Dyer's bottom tower is about to. There's not much life to it left anyway. So with the alacrity, this Luna's gonna cut through. But again. Watch the oh, okay, here we go, here we go. Be I could. So see how Yoraki's fighting over here, but look over here in this corner with the live thing in the way. Oh, dear. He's, he's just so he's coming right back up. And look at this, look how he's got the BKB active. It's, he's just one, and he's just he's just one guy. He's fighting them. He's whacking tower. away, yeah. He's uh, about to insane. Absolutely insane. Omar the Ferocious, I, what the hell was Omar that? Omar the Fighter. Good lord. <laughs> He looks very pleased with himself. That kid it ter it. terrifies me. Genuinely. My god. I mean, birds terrify you too, but... Well, that's... Yes. They're very violent creatures. Amar might be a bird, actually. I don't know. <laughs> you think, I'm, I think Amar I'm, the feathered friend? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Bring By the way, going all the way back, down. I really like Misha's positioning in that fight. Dying first. That was 100% because the they needed to run in and steal the Aegis on Team Liquid. And so he just runs in and dies because he's not needed to interrupt the black hole. Now he's going to be more careful with his positioning. They'll have fiends, they've got the they've got everything. It's a lockboxy down. I think when Misha doesn't have fiends group up, he can just throw his life away for like a good initiation. Mm -hmm. And when he does have fiends group, then he can play that backliner. And he just tags along with Luna everywhere to make sure that he's in position. Yeah. Uh, one other like underrated element to Bane is definitely the enfeeble. It's really annoying being Matu and trying to like life steal your way through these fights, and he's also like reducing your damage by like what sixty percent. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, Underlord on the flip side, who's also reducing that. So like, how the hell are you, how the hell are you doing damage? You're just not. That's the problem. <laughs> that is a huge problem. It's it's just I. It's really just I. BKB gets completed for the Wraith King, but they found himself Misha. He does have the fiend script that's on cooldown. So like you said, he, he's taking a little bit of a risky move, trying to go and do some D wards. He's a body. He's fine with this though. And again, while this is happening, Yoragi continues yes, to go up in terms of net worth, currently sitting at the top 16k, 15k over on BZM. So, I mean, maybe that's their plan, and if it is, it's working out real nice. Aghanim Scepter now completed for Invoker. Lots of good items coming out. So the likely thing to be paired with the Cataclysm in this game is Bane. Nightmare, Fiend Script, yeah. Yeah, they don't exactly have any other great setup for it. Like, Underlord is just not realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, you're playing into BKBs with Roots. You're not gonna get Cataclysm off. They're gonna BKB it and just walk out of it. So, lots. Of pressure on Misha this game in order to set up his team. Amar just teleported out and just got a kill. All right. I'm confused. Yeah, me too a little bit, but I guess he saw the opportunity. I'm not going to pretend to know what the hell just happened, but somehow <laughs> Monty is dead. I don't know. All right. Well, there it is. There's the alacrity of Melina again. Still has that 
Aegis for another 25 seconds, and they're just going to chew through this tower just very quickly. <laughs> Interesting that Yoragi has a Crystallis, and he went back for completing the full Manta style, and then he's not even finishing any Daedalus or Silver Edge type item. He's going for... Oh, the Black Hole over onto BZM. Tiger's here, though. Immediately, Shadow not going to be able to go and stop. Because BZM somehow was still alive at the end, but still manages to fall. Tiger now running away. Cookie Hop, oh, they can be able to get this kill. Mickey gets the nice hit here. As the rest of the team on OG, they were not prepared for that. But, I mean, the thing that I'm concerned about, Jenkins, is now Black Hole's on cooldown. Yeah, the thing is, when you get this late into the game, you know, Invoker's dead for 60 seconds. Yeah. So when Invoker's back alive, Black Hole will be only on cooldown for 60 seconds. And that's a tough timing to, like, take a smoke by the time you get to the fight. There's like 30 seconds left on it if you perfectly time it. So that's the nice thing about killing a core with Black Hole at this point in the game when they're as farmed as this invoker. Is it like the death timer is just so long? So it's gonna work out. Right. Yeah. For them to at least take some damage over onto this tower. Uh, but I also think, again, this is a very pokey lineup, so I think as soon as Invoker's back up, they could try to make something happen. Just don't have that threat anymore. And the question for Liquid is, in this downtime, do you want to play, like, together but safe, or split and safe? And I'm kind of feeling that, yeah, OG goes for, like, the immediate smoke. If you play together and safe, you're risking, like, getting into a 5v5 fight. Mm -hmm. oh. This is honestly for, like, better. Can I go for everything? My goodness, here he does the Eclipse. We have a Sun Strike. It's a lot of damage. Like, you'd rather that be your five, but when you split up like that after using Black Hole, uh -huh. you just lose one person instead of, like, three or four, where you can lose the game off of that, you know? Right. We get an immediate rift from Amar Yoragi running over to Taiga. Now that this kunk is down for 50-something seconds, they gotta flex the muscle a little bit, Oxy. I like the entity. I, just, I look at Amar's inventory, and I've been watching this kid play all week in pubs. And I just feel like if he has a tower, he just gets satanic. I was gonna say, if he has a chance to get satanic, he gets one. That's just wrong. He just gets satanic on literally everything. Like, the guy just plays carry from the offlane, and then somehow solo kills carries and weavers off screen to the point that we don't even, like, we can't even conceive of how the hell it happened, you know? It's. You know, just lost to three heroes and, you know, murders position one. It's just, it's it's gotta feel so weird to play against. It's just weird. Because no offlaner plays like this. Well, I think maybe that's why he's having such good success. I mean, aside from the fact that he's obviously very talented, but the idea is just you're bringing something new to the game. And how often do we see that happen? Whenever we see teams like, for example, Secret always likes to run, you know, a bit peculiar drafts, everybody gets caught off guard. And immediately they scramble, they go back, they launch the replays. They're like, okay, how did this possibly happen? Yeah. Because they need to figure it out and it becomes just commonplace. Uh, that's a very exciting thing for Dota. It's one of the things that I think makes it so incredibly cool is the fact that there's constantly know? new builds and new ways to play just coming out of nowhere. And half the time we're like, oh my god, this seems insane. I think it, I think but, it matters more these days because everything is so close. Mm -hmm. um, due to the fact that there's like this amazing replay system, you can like study replays and get up to date really quickly. There's so many people competing. You've got DPC. Like, there's a lot of reasons why Tier 1 and Tier 2 are closing in on each other and why these teams are all so close to each other. So these like random new ideas that people have never seen before have that much more value because you're not just gonna like outlane a team because everybody's so good at laning, right? So it's like you need to do stuff like this where it's like people don't know how to play into a satanic underlord because but have you played against the Satanic Underlord? Most Underlords honestly build these, like, uh, defensive, safe, yeah. like, sad items. Like, sad items? Yeah, the Guardian Greaves and, and Crimsons. It's like this guy's just running at you, going for Abyssal Blade with a, with a Satanic on Underlord, farming the enemy ancients alone. Well, how do you deal with it? That's the question Liquid's asking right. themselves right now. Is they are smoked up, they do have a Black Hole available, and they have the BKB. Oh, this is interesting. All right, they're going to immediately find Misha. They'll blow him up. So now if they want to find anything else, they don't have to worry about Bane. There is no buyback on Misha. But OG most likely just going to try to dodge any fights that they can for now. Yeah, he has the grip, so that's a really good kill. See? He's 
I mean, if we're going to have an abyssal blade on the Underlord, that's another solution to the BKB. But uh, no solution here, it looks like, for Mr. Boxy. He wandered into the wrong triangle at the wrong time. It used to be way better, abyssal versus Enigma, because because of the little jump that you got out of it, but now that they now that they remove that, not so much of the counter. Like you have to kind of mess up as Enigma to let somebody that. walk in. And I mean, you could get an Ether Lens plus a Bissell. That would that would work. But Zai almost has his Lincoln Sphere. It's such a cheap item these days too, so he'll have it really quickly. Um, and so that way the the Bane is going to be less of a problem. The illusions are just taking all that farm away from Matu. Smoke play though, coming out from the side of OG. Gonna let Taiga lead. Pretty slippery here. Luna's finished her own Satanic, so these fights could potentially go on for quite a while. Look at the way the Misha's playing. Does have a blink dagger now on the Bane. Big far back, Taiga. We'll find himself in Sadia. He calls Snap, Lucy, and Beam. And that's a dead Insania. While well, the rest of Liquid now start moving into the lower half of the jungle. They don't want to have to deal with this. They don't want to have to take a fight without their Snapfire. But they're going to force the issue, it feels, because there is a, uh, a Roche up. And I think OG wants it. Uh, you know, your life is is definitely about to end when you're when you force staff yourself through two brambles <laughs> as the like only way out. <laughs> That's like your safest option. Yeah. No way out. No way out. And Liquid, they're not interested in fighting this. Um, you know, I suppose the idea is like they can black hole the invoker just like they did in an earlier fight and win the game by ignoring your Augie and just kiting him uh, and then like kill him afterwards and they figure like if they're gonna do it one time they can maybe do it a second time but the problem is as SVG was talking about, we've mentioned a lot, it's like this is a huge pokey lineup from OG, and so if you're letting your Augie sit there and beam and beam and beam and beam and beam while you're like quote unquote kiting him, it's it's he's really the one kiting you at that point. That is so many summons. I know. Somewhere there's an earth shaker that's just twitching. Just like, oh, I know it's there somewhere. Somebody needs to deal with that, alright. Alright, I like this. Okay, we've got the we Lincoln's on Zai now, so it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but. The positioning has still been just really excellent, and there's still ways to go and, and cancel this black hole, as long as they know about that Lincoln, so perhaps BZM, they can the jump. BZM, also, he's got his uh, Elon disc. Uh, it's disassembled and locked, so he can use it in the black hole. To the Terrorize, I've got the two side strikes, and that's a dead box, see? All right, I did not anticipate that as a combo, but oh, it they works. They grabbed themselves a uh, Rape King here. Gonna just try to force staff off and try to run away a little bit first. They'll pop the Lincolns over the Enigma. They ping it out. They know he's got it now. Cookie Hop coming up from the Lady Oh, Misha, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> that midnight pulse and those Eidolons are pesky. A little bit of a whoopsie. Yeah, but yeah. Without, once again, without grip, it's like just not, not much of a, a hero. Although, you know. Looking back at that idea, it's like now that there's a Lincoln's, you could argue that the most important part about Bane is becoming the enfeeble mm. on Raid King, right. as well as like the kiting that comes out from Nightmare, because I don't think you're going to interrupt this black hole anymore. It's not going to be possible if Zai is positioning well, and it's Zai, so he, probably, <laughs> he probably will. Uh, you're not going to abyssal it. You don't have, you know, an ether lens to allow you to do that. It's just the grip, so Zai's going to get his whole lot. And you have other options for dealing with it. Like, that's what the Eon Disc Core is on uh, for BZM. Nice ice path. I'm gonna try to burn through this mono over on Ma He does have the shard, though. So, it's a dead one. So, they're gonna go back in against Zai, getting into position here immediately, though. Yuragi gonna try to just monta things off. That nightmare moves away fast. They reset. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of happening for nothing right Not now. Not much but. else to do in base other than just spin. Wow. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. They did take out the reincarnation, so things are very scary for Mati to go forward here. Yeah. With that nerf on Wraith Game 2, 40 seconds, or 20 extra seconds he has to wait. Okay, all right, they're gonna try to make some plays here over onto the Luna. Still has the Aegis. This taking out a minute pulse hurts. Uh, First, death of Luna down. They're gonna try to maybe. grab her. Get out of here. Okay. They don't need to push their luck right now. They'll just back. Is this a fake back? Are they going to try to move their way back in again? I think Amar was worried about the 
like hole into the Aegis, so he just huh. prevented that entirely by bringing him to the creep wave. And it's not far enough away that it's like, oh, they're out. You know, no, they're still in. Um, that was just just in case the whole hole was going to come there. So it's actually a really good read by Zai to not hole there. He's like, it's too obvious. There's going to be some sort of save coming in. That would have been a dang save. But if that would have been all did happen Bane, right? in a Mar save like that, like that's like that's just a good read from both sides. I literally did not see that. One for the highlight reel. It would have been. Uh, all right, what do we have? What do we have for neutral items? Tumby is picking up uh, rapier for like regular items. That's next. not a neutral item. Um, it's actually very non-neutral. It's quite aggressive. Quite aggressive, yes. So he had it queued up in the previous game as well, um, or the first game, I should say. And uh, never got around to it. Never got around to it. But you know, Wraith King is one of these heroes that Dyer's the rapier still is that. Is like you know, you're, you're power spiking the entire game. Like you're stronger than us. You get the rapier, all of a sudden, like we're twice as strong as you. Uh, it used to be like that for every single hero when I gave True Strike. But um, now it's more so just only really good on these heroes that benefit massively from the rapier damage, which a hero that has a built-in guaranteed crit, of course, kind of uh, one-shotting people is never bad. He also has a cleave talent now, for some reason, on Wraith King. So that's pretty nice as well with the rapier. Yeah, but I'll be able to help clear very, very fast and put a lot of damage for sure. We haven't really been able to move out of the base, though, over here on the side of Liquid. They're getting a couple more of these neutral items. Roxy, though, does get spotted out with three meteors. It's, again, that is the Aeon Dust getting popped here. Roxy tried to teleport it out. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to because it gets terrorized and he gets yes. clicked down. Easy end. Looks like they were trying to make something happen. Yuragi get positioned. He said he can't afford to go down like this, but he will get slain. What happened? That did he use a feed script? No. Still fighting. Found themselves another target side going to the black hole. Only gonna be able to go and grab a pocket. Look at this damage. They're just able to outcut them. Are not allowed to fight at all. So they will find themselves as a kill. Black so hole, the follow up. So we've got tornado EMP, but it looks like it's just to disengage. You know, taken down too. It's 11k goalie for OG, but I actually feel like Liquid's in a pretty good spot. Uh, they're getting into the late game with Enigma. There's not great ways of canceling the black hole. Uh, Zai's going to be getting that refresher fairly uh, fairly soon. So instead of that just being a kill on Omar, who should be you know completely unkillable, it'll be a kill also on Yuragi, who should be unkillable, unless they die here. No? They're trying to make something happen. They've got the dust, they've got the X off. But not going to be able to connect here, as already EZM runs away, uses that BKB to ensure he can escape. That's not looking at the minimap. BZM just poking again, and he seems to do this on every hero, where he just blinks in, just uses spells, like, baits you into thinking that there's a bunch of people behind him so that you press stuff. And, uh, I mean, it's it can be so game-ruining for your opponents mm -hmm. to, like, get baited by that and press things, but Liquid didn't exactly take the bait there, and, you know, I, I suppose being game three in a long, intense series like this, you're, you do tend to get used to a certain player's uh, play style. I mean, it is a situation, right, where you're not sure about me. Oh, 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 okay. There was an insanity there, but Matamba Man jumping in. Notice that there doesn't have that BKB quite up and running. Zai getting into position here. He gets side, so he's trying to get it. Pop the Lincolns. Bang just getting stuck up. He's taking too much damage, so the buyback will pay off as Misha does come back again. Mickey taking a lot of damage here from Yuragi. They need to get a little bit more damage to tie. Are they going to be able to do it? The Ori Lopaga. And now, Matu. There's this big catapult. They're going to connect, but it connects over onto Boxy. Matu running for his life. BZM, look how fast he is. He wants to try to grab him, but he's just not going to be able to close the gap as multiple buybacks occur during that fight. So there's not Roche. Uh, that fight is just kind of like both sides are just hoping to kill an important hero and run down mid and get a Rax, but didn't really happen for either side. Uh, I think if you're if you're Liquid, you're, you're happy with that because you don't have Black Hole and still the fight goes decently for you. Uh, you force a buyback, you have the buyback as well, and then your Weaver dies and he gets his buyback timer out of the way. So I'm, I'm really feeling like even though there's a 13k gold lead, if you have Enigma on your side, you're you're fairly happy with these things happening. Uh, OG's looking to like 
really pressure off of one of these no black hole timings pretty soon, especially with this next Roche coming up. I mean, that's the the draw of these big team fight heroes, right? A good Echo Slam, a good Black Hole, or Dream Girl, something like that, can actually just change the course of the entire game if it happens in the manner that will maximize, uh, you know, the damage. Uh, Speaking of damage, double damage rune. And Yoragi has an Octarine core on Luna too, so Oof. he is really trying to play like that, uh, you know, Phantom Lancer Octarine core build where you just kind of sit at the side and like, spam. spam your abilities. <laughs> so this is like fully committing to that idea of you're never going to black hole me because I'm never going to enter into a fight. Um, we'll see if it works. I will say it's a little bit odd, like looking at the lineup and looking at the itemization that came out from a lot of these heroes. Like, I guess the, the main initiation comes out from BZM, right? With a long range tornado or something. Because you don't want to have Misha that far forward. Yeah, it's like BZM or Taiga. Like, yeah. They, it's, they've both been a little weird. But Taiga can only do so, so much. Yeah. Smoke play, though, coming out from Liquid. They're going to try to make their way out of the base, see if they can grab any stragglers. They'd love to get rid of Misha again, I'm pretty sure. but. I'm gonna let Oxy Scout Kuchi do yeah, the refresher orb is completed now. This is a big item tower. timing for is Liquid. If they can get two gold. black holes off, just turn the tide completely. We can see a huge gold swing. It rushes up. So this is time, Taiga. I'm gonna walk the boxy because he hop goes into the shadow realm. Drops him in like post. A little bit of a hex coming out. BZM chasing after the Weaver Tiger, but taking a lot of damage over on the side. Going for those long grace that Marcus is. Taiga has himself a Yule and buys a little bit more time. Not enough, though, so. Don't have to worry about that. There's a gem on deck. Looks like they've snapped it up. He needs three tornadoes, then he can survive that. Two was clearly not enough. Clearly. Let's get more. This is the Stormcrafter that he had and the, uh, the Yules, but. It's not quite enough. 5,100 gold on Luna. Now, I'm thinking, like, what do you buy for this build? Because you don't really care about a moon shard, right? Because you're just playing from... Like, you're playing off of your cues, which is dependent on cooldown, not on attack speed. So Scotty? I was going to say, I think I think Scotty, and then... Yeah. Oh, oh, Drop the boots. Like, but if you're dropping the boots, then... You need the... I mean, they do have spider legs on the team, I'm pretty sure, but... I think I think you probably have to drop the boots, but the issue with that is the fact that Zai now has an easier chance at getting that black hole on you, because you're slow. A lot of positioning issues, but Roche is up. This is big. Each team, they want this. It's going to be really hard to go into a pit, though, when you have an Enigma on the enemy team, when you have a refresher. A lot on the line here. Let's see the way that they're dancing around the pit. Rapier on, uh, I just realized, but has a rapier, and that's Does very important. Have a rapier. Okay, so this is a tremendous timing from Liquid. It's it's a 12k gold lead for OG, but Liquid, in, in my opinion right now, is actually stronger. And you can see that OG feels like that as well. They do not want to engage to the point they literally have an Octarine core on their Luna. It's all about getting the right initiation. Like, get the right hero, get a pick off. Nightmare, Fiend's Grip, some Invoker Tornado on the supports in the back. But Liquid also, they know that. They know that if they take a fight right now, they win. So let's just not get caught. Just follow the Tumba Man around. It's that easy. Radiance Middle Tower that can't easy. handle this deluge. Foxy. Trying to do a little bit of scouting. They can see Tigers over here. Send over the Eidolons, try to get more information. Foxy's got to chill He's for like got... 10 more seconds, dude. He's got his Eon disc up in 10 seconds. Like, he is frisking. I mean, they're here. just poking away. He's got time. He's good. He's good. He's good. It's interesting because we talk about OG having so much poke, but with Boxy on this uh, on this Weaver, he's allowed to do quite a bit of his own poking, just getting this information. As long as they don't unlock him, right? That's what it all comes down to. Illusion on Illusion Axe, and easy. I'm coming forward here. Just gonna clean it up a little bit. This is where, if you're Liquid, you would really love to have a hero that has boots of travel. They're going for the full They're going wrap in, run. they're going for full wrap here. See these couriers zipping they around. BZ I'm jumping in. Oh, we wanted to get Zai, but it's a little bit too slow here. Jump forward here for Matu will immediately pop the A on this. A lot of damage being dumped out here. The follow-up. Can they get enough damage? Are backing off? They don't like this position. 
nothing. They don't want the side. Finding this opening, he's looking to get anything done. That's a lot of damage coming out from the gang as they just obliterate Misha. No buyback on Bane, which is very spooky stuff now. Mickey picking himself up. Hex, leaded Hex. Okay. okay. They're going for full control on the side of Liquid. They know that they've got lots of damage from Matu. And they're all just buying out. They're saying, like, this is where we win or, win or lose the game. Look at they go. They don't have the bait. This is very, very scary. Reminder, they have this refresher on their Enigma. And they don't have a way to cancel out these black holes. If they get a second refresher too, like the, the refresher, refresher shot. Refresher, refresher, yeah. It's gonna be devastating. Lots of hellfire raining down. It's too late though. Matumba Man got himself that Aegis, so he's got a backup plan now that he has that rapier on board. Yeah, so he's got a second refresher. Oh he my the, god. They give the Ag Shard too. Oh wait, there's no Ag Shard on the third rush, right? No, it's just a refresher. <laughs> Uh, the cheese is on Mickey. Okay, yeah, that's a great cheese target. Not so good on uh, your Wraith King. He's gonna have three lives anyway. Go on the hero that gets that damage reduction. Say refresh or seventy-three. Seventy-three Ford spirits. They've been busy. Uh, that's a lot. It's a lot of death. It has been littered with death. Radiance Middle Tower. We have, I think, a kill per minute basically. If you look at the heroes. 73 Forge Spirits? It's all Lena. There's no way. For the Eidolons, anyway. There's no way. So 106 on that. See, that's more reasonable, because there's, you know, you spawn so many of them. 73 Forge Spirits, that's more than one a minute. My boy's feeding his, <laughs> his friends. All right. Amar's going back for the Hex. His build, his build now is seeming a little all over the place. <laughs> Very much a little all over the place, for sure. Radiant got a Satanic, a Basher, an Atos. Uh, looking at a Hex now. We've got some control, a little bit of damage, a little bit of sustainability. Not sure exactly what the Sunderlord is. Uh, He's, got He's got some identity issues. Currently. Yeah. What if it ends up winning the game? Yeah, whatever. I mean, it works. sometimes you have to pivot. I, I don't disagree with this. It's like... He's realizing that he's not going to be this like frontlining right clicker because if he goes in, well, we saw what happened when he went in. Yes. He gets hold. He dies. Doesn't matter how tanky he is because Enigma's percentage damage. The tankier you are, the more damage he does to you. Missing Mega! Oh, Wind Waker. Okay. So Taiga built the correct item. That's a. That's a really good item. As long as he doesn't get blown up first, though. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, the problem is when there are three black holes and you only have one Wind Waker. <laughs> In my, do the math for me, Jacob. By my power. calculations, that's too few. <laughs> for the treasury. Say my name. Yeah, that's an Amar spray right there. He did say his name earlier. Very authoritative voice. Amar? Yes. Yeah, that's his name. Yep, that is his name. An Agnum Scepter. Okay, I like this. <laughs> He's Hell. just like... Yeah. He's just like, you know what? Let's just get wild in this game. Let's we're, get that gate. Hey, Have we seen portaling. a Fiend's gate? We're portaling to their fountain. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to kill Zai when he respawns. Ooh, there we go. Oh, there's a Hex. He's going to try to blow him up as fast as possible. People's a little bit off the mark here. Oh, this is looking a little bit scary for BZM. Careful to a sheet. There's a lot of damage. He's got BKB. He's gonna go walk away. They've got him already nearby. They need to get out of there. And by God, they just peace out. See you later. Zai unfortunately got his blink canceled just at like the last second by that ice wall. I think he was looking to use one of the holes. Use one of the holes, yeah. And um, BCM, nice positioning, putting that ice wall down to cancel Zai's blink and then playing like at the far end of it from Zai. So they moved the refresher. Otherwise, yeah, great thing. Uh, let me see. I mean, I suppose it's because he's got a rapier, and so you can refresh the ult and get that third life. Uh, the Aegis is also coming to an end, so... Did I see Witchbane on Wraith King? Yeah. Witchbane. Radius Maybe the name of the people or something? I don't know. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's very cool. Oh, brambles. It's like Sleeping Beauty's castle over here. Well, he can also Witch Bane off the Alacrity, which is not bad. 
the cook-up link rapier on Rape King so they can do this, like, X sieging. And, and uh, there's not much that you can do about this. I mean, I suppose you have the Wind Waker, but then you're dealing with a... You'd have to commit pretty hard, and that's very difficult, because pretty much all of their stuff has some kind of a wind-up. It's a four-life Wraith King, too, so not exactly the best thing to be Wind Wakering into your base. Definitely not. It's like inviting a bear into your house. Don't invite bears into your house, guys. It's not a good idea. They maul. They do indeed. Not the kind that you would hang out in as a kid. Well, not, I mean, I a lot of people are Zoomers now. They don't know what that means. No, that is true. I'm sorry. I'm not with Dota players, so let's be real. <laughs> We're all old. Except for Tigov. Yeah, baby. From the core of the universe. Look at him. Look at him. He's Kappa. creeping. He's thinking about it. He's like, if I had a portal right now, I could be in fountain <laughs> and in these trees right now. He's tempted. He sees all these lovely eidolons. But he's the only one who's able to really make steps out of the space right now. It's just too difficult for the rest of the team. OG. So Mars gotta be that guy, BZM. He's trying to push out a little bit, but immediately, you know, backing off, getting back to the safety of his base. Smoke play coming up from Lupa, it looks like they're probably gonna try to punch him more impossible, perhaps. What, now the question is, what does a Mars sell for the eggs? Does he wait until he has the consumable? Is he going to sell the, the boots? The basher? I feel like you can't sell the boots, right? Because the boots just make him so, he's so slow then. Even though he does have like the, the blink, right? He's got the mobility item, but there's a lot of ways to cancel it out. And you don't want to be stuck in that midnight pool. I just big don't boy. Want to Oh, big boy. <laughs> BKBs is gonna just teleport on out. He's gotta add a little cheeky damage on the way too. Look at this. Look at the immediately, Ooh, they immediately TP right. to the bottom area. They know BZM's down here. BZM walks right into Insania. Look at these. There's not the ice wall is going. Uh oh. Uh oh. I gotta get out of here. They're going for the black hole. They're gonna get rid of this invoker right here, right now. Alright, alright. No spots. I thought the Eon disc was, you know, he might survive this. And then Matamba's just no, like, no. no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and one shot in here. Well, he does a buyback, so not the end of the road. Amara's has just been spending so much time up here now, too. He's got it coming out. He's got his eggs. And he's getting a bloodstone. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where's his eggs? Oh, the thought there's a nightmare immediately being placed over here on Matu. He didn't buy it yet. You're so, you're so, so excited. I want to see the eggs. So excited. Not quite there just yet. And Monty is just, they're going to keep doing these cute little plays here. Just put them into sleepy mode. Poison back. Nice for Mickey to hit the torrent there just in case the. Uh, the Wind Waker comes out, keeping Monty in the base. That could be, that could be bad. Be indeed. But they're they're throwing like Lincoln spheres on him, so that's even hard to do. He's so well protected, I guess. Is the thing, right? Like yeah. if you initiate on him, he's got the second life. Follow up. Goes to the BKB play this time. He's like, I'm tired of being nightmared. And he dares them to use something stronger on him, but they're not going to take that bait over on the side of OG. Yeah, he has refreshed BKB just in case. So he's fairly confident just using that to siege, force out the glyph. Um, arguably, at this point in the game, the Glyph is actually worth more than the Rax because, <laughs> like, these heroes are so strong, you can take Throne in literally three seconds, so forcing out that Glyph with BKB is, is actually really important. We're, we almost have 60-minute items coming out, so, you know, we have this really nice time. I mean, from Liquid, where they're really strong because they have, you know, Rapier and Sheep on Mickey and... That sort of thing, but once you get those 60 minute items, like things are just chaos. And that looks like the next item she's considering is the butterfly, but she's got so many items. <laughs> yeah, what, what the hell do you drop? Uh, yeah, for? exactly. That's that's a big question here. Yeah. Look, what playing in their own jungle? Just gonna push out this top wave. I'll stand on the high ground. He's got a Lincoln Sphere too on Insania, so that's. 
that's gonna be a, a Lincoln Spear that he can put on his team. That's to, you know, protect his Wraith King. Oh, okay. the Eidolons. Oh right. my goodness, they take an entire Rax here. So, we're gonna have to send BZM back. They lose two Rax here. Yeah, another, you know, chaotic element of these, like, 60-minute scenarios is 25s on heroes. Like, Enigma with the Eidolons, they, they do so much damage at this point. You summon, like, 15 of them or something. Plus five demonic conversion Eidolons. Yes. Yes. You have a full yeah. army. Is yes, it's ridiculous. Um, it's so hard to execute fights at this point. It, it, it really comes down to like if one hero on either side gets caught out, it's pretty GG. Alright, here I Trying to just force them back. It is a little bit of the glaze bouncing. Amar's already in position here. They pop the BKB over on Yuragi. They're just gonna take as much of the base as they can, but there is a little bit of poking back and forth here in this mid lane. Boxy continuing to try to push out the wave. Yeah, this, is good. this is getting pretty spicy. I like this. You know, Iki, you got one side doing this like X play to. Siege the high ground, and then the other side, they're using a bar to rift out. Uh, that's pretty nice. I mean, either side, there's there's no fort on either side, but either side can go throw at some point. The game can just blow up. On the side of the strike, they realize they're in the pit immediately. The smoke coming out for OG. They want to try to fight this, but this rift is going down way too fast. And going for the cookie out, they want to ensure that they can hang it up. There's a lot of nice, juicy toys on the ground. Except they're getting picked up on Mickey. So grab up that. Aegis as well here as OG go back off. Oh, we get a giant's ring. Oh, Let's go, baby. Let's top. go. Adds up. Big Skelly, man. Now, the best thing about this is it means he can drop the boots and he's still insanely fast. Like, yep. when you're a rapier Wraith King, you're so happy with this. All right, Fallen Sky. Fallen Sky? That's a good one. Here we put a Fallen Sky on Book of the Dead. That's one of the worst ones that you can get. Although, if we're going for some throne race, like, I mean, you know, it's good for that. Book of Shadows, too. Very nice. Very nice for uh, That's a me, that's a big item. You want, you don't want, you want, a, you want that you item. Want the you want the yeah. Desolator. Deso 2, baby. Yeah, that is, uh, that's like the highest damage item in the game right there. I was saying for positioning purposes, Book of the Shadows is pretty nice. But... I don't know, I find it, I find it to be very underwhelming. I'm always disappointed. Uh, hey. So, Hello. Hello there. can't even see him because he's so large. He down gets dropped on the ground. Oh, that's a dope item. That's Mirror a good shield one. is so good. Yeah. Oh, Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, against Bane, too, you're just like, well, what the hell do I do? I'm gripping myself. <laughs> that came out wrong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, Zytho is getting clicked down by some of these summons. That is a very long x marks spot. My goodness. He is just not even able to clear that because of Book of the, the Dead. He's just walking right. Yeah, look at this. Oh, looks like the Book of the Dead building into an Octary core. Very nice. That's a book. Yeah. Pressure Invoker, Strength Blink. Um, this man is far. Oh my god. Matu, just giant skeleton man. This looks like a Dark Souls boss at this point. Yeah. Uh... High Lord Walnir. That's the that's the skeleton boss. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like that. Guy. He looks like him. Mm -hmm. He really does. He's like, it's a very easy. It's a super easy yeah, fight. Super yeah, easy it's boss. a really this easy. Does not fight. Look it's, as easy. No, no, this is looking tough. Uh, oh, force boots. Nobody's using force boots. Oh, okay, that's like the best neutral item. Tier five. Oh, they go for the black hole play over on BZM. They've had enough of his nonsense. He pops the BKB. He's got to run though. He's got to get out of there fast. He's just throwing out meatballs. He's using all the spells possible. Goes for the refresher. Trying to run away here. Zai, he's got the BKB. They want this invoker, but they can't get their hands on him. He's too fast. They cannot close the gap on BZM. He's just running for his life. Look at this man. Oh, he is so enthused to be alive right now. <laughs> Clearly. Fight me indeed, but you got to catch him first. Got Arcanist armor, and we've got. Uh, to be honest, that's the look of somebody who just shit their pants. Like, is just looking. <laughs> you sound like you'd be an expert. Dead serious, yeah. Answer. You look dead serious because you're like, oh no, I'm on camera. Just got play cool, play cool. Yeah, that was that was nice though. That Nobody using nice. force boots. I think Zai actually used the refresher for that too. So I don't know if he used the refresher shard or the apex. I know. Oh baby. Use the. Uh, we just have the refresher orb on cooldown. Okay. And the shard is gone. Shard is gone. Okay, so he used both, actually. So he still has one black hole left. So they're fighting into one black hole instead of three. That's a little bit more doable, I think, for OG, but still very scary when you consider 
How big Mr. Matu is. <sighs> Immediately BZ up, they're like, nope, get in the car, get in the car, get down here. Misha, Misha, get in this car. And they're gone. Even going for that BKB. Ooh, this is a high stress, high tension game. Yeah, at some point, one team is going to just throw the other while all five are They all have buyback, too. That's why I feel like a throne play, like a surprise throne play will happen, which that's what it looked like to me that OG was setting up. So all the trees got taken. <laughs> yeah, that was that's an issue. I mean, so I can basically deforest the Amazon at this point if you wanted to. Can we talk about how sad Taiga is? Like, he bought one of the most expensive items, and that's basically been it for this dude. <laughs> Look at his items. <laughs> that's what feels bad. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, he's got big aspirations, right? He's got the MKB and the eggs. You know what the up. sad thing is? Like his net worth doesn't even look that bad because it's just that expensive. It's that right expensive. Now. It's insane. Matu clicking away in the tower. Get all these eidolons. Oh my word. I mean, they have a good high ground defense, right? You mean consider you've got a Luna, has got all the glaives going to be bouncing. You've got the uh, firestorm coming off from the. Uh, the Underlord, and of course you've got a tornado to help clear out a little bit and meatballs, but he's getting that. silly. Very silly. This is just like a battle of the demons down here. Yeah, honestly, it just keeps sending out your summons and you see uh I which, don't know which one are more powerful. I don't know who's winning. <laughs> <laughs> I think Liquid the way that they're just running here into the base and being able to pull these shenanigans is looking pretty good. We've got double cheese on deck. I'm not the double Decker cheese. I, I'm not even sure if Megas matters that much at this point. I think it's just picking somebody off who doesn't have buyback. I mean, this is a really nice. I mean, they play. all have buyback. It's gonna, this is going to be quite the. Yeah, war. I suppose like picking somebody off who has buyback, forcing them to buy back, and then killing them again. Like that's yeah, that's what we're the game is boiling down to at this point. Because either side, when you get these late game scenarios, like both sides have their strengths. There's 25 talents and neutral items. Like they're just insane. Well, they make the game very interesting, and they're also designed to make the game end. But when you've got this kind of a a matchup here, you got to be feeling that tension. Here we go. Okay, there it is, small in the sky, but they have that. The axe can immediately pull him back. Oh, see, taking a lot of damage. How many Aeon do we have at this point in this game? Uh, a lot. Well, there's so many items that Boxy has a tier 5 neutral item in his backpack, and he's, he's using Apex <laughs> on a pause 4 Weaver. That sounds about right. Just let that sink in for a second. Your position 4 is using Apex. But Tombo's like, God, I don't that shit. Get it out of here. He's, he's got a giant string. He's a big baddie. Look at the far. He's trying to man fight him. <laughs> they Classic both do, Amar. They both do literally zero damage to each other. I know. They just stare at each other. and It's, it's like one of those skits, right, where they uh, take off their glove and, like, slap the other person. It's more to hurt their pride than to actually hurt them at this rate. It seems like a British thing to me to slap the glove. Oh, I think it's a French or British thing. Oh, it's a European thing okay. in general. It's a European I thing for sure, yeah. I could be wrong. Have we seen a torrent storm yet? I feel like there no, hasn't been a fight. No, we haven't seen Waterbender yet. Since he's gotten that, it's it's the later the game goes, the better that ability is. It's just it's so disruptive, and you know, I would imagine he is level thirty on Kunko, or is going to get level thirty, and so he's going to have all of the torrent talents. Play How many BKBs on deck though, too? Yeah, but it lasts. So all right, long. Oh, oh, nice going away here, but again. All right, that is the the eclipse I got used. They do have the Agnum Scepter on Yuragi, but like of course he has an axe. Yeah, we're, naturally. we're 67 minutes into the game. Like everybody should be kitted out except for poor Taiga, who still has <laughs> the same items that he's had. I mean, Amar, he's gotta save up for that buyback. Though. Amar has enough either because he's just like he's still Amar has an identity crisis. Right. He needs to finish up that. The Abyssal, right? He's going back for the Abyssal. He had Agnum's queued up to literally 10 seconds ago. So he's finally, he's finally getting that. He's like, ah, oh, the eggs is too, like, too insane. Although, I don't even know. I still think the eggs is, uh, is potentially good. Like, we're talking about these plays. They go for a throw play with it. All right. Matsu, he's in. No. Slowly but surely, they're winning the, the game. This is the worst way to win Dota. Yeah. Like, it's the slow bleed out. But it's, ugh. Oh. Number one, it's the only way to win Dota at this point. That's and number two, it's also a way worse way to lose Dota. Yes, it's way worse. That is... Just watching helplessly, like, what can I do? I can't hit him. 
I just question what I'm looking at when I see a Stygian Desolator off Okay, alright, Amar, he's in. Alright, Marathon's out. They've got some of those beats in the base, but there's a big cataclysm coming in. Can they take down this ring? Get down, back up again. It's the Weaver. There's a black hole coming off of Zyde with that BKB. He's on the side. 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 There's just so little to analyze at this point in the game. It's like that fight was just Zai trying to hit anybody with Wagyu. Iraqi? 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 We have another Aeon disc. Look at, look at the amount of refreshes and the amount of Aeon discs in this game. I think it has to be a new record. Yeah, the, these are just like the late game items. Uh, and Zai takes the Aegis because everybody else is slotted, <laughs> so he doesn't have much of a choice. Oh my damage. god, a double damage and a Matsumaku's damage. Oh my god. Uh, Luna yeah. has too much stuff! Naturally. Luna yeah. has way too much stuff! Yeah, I have not allowed yeah, at least, but... Go ahead and throw that in the, in the old stash to the Satanic. Yeah, I'll use that. Put it in the bath and everything else. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> I love this kind of Dota. This is like so much fun to see. What do you do when your back's up against the wall? Does everybody have an Aeon disc over on the side of, of OG now? I guess no. They don't have one on the the Bane. They don't have Surpri one on the Surprisingly. It feels like everybody has it though, but they don't. All right, all right. Another you know, smoke play here coming out from OG. They're looking to poke. They're looking for some sort of engagement refresher on Luna. Again, reminder that there is a refresher on the Wraith King. Shard on the Enigma. This is gonna be one heck of a battle. It all comes down to who gets the jump Radiant on who. Are scanning for enemies. This, this is gonna sound absolutely insane. Everything you say sounds insane. Well, it's also 71 minutes in. I, I feel like the <laughs> Man is not actually doing damage, even though he has a literal rapier. Like, they're so tanky. It's just, they're so tanky. And because he has this, this refresher, they're somehow able to kind of ignore him and just go for everybody else. Like, the support's lives are the most important at this point in the game for both sides. Yeah. EZM gets found out here. Does have buyback. Okay, the snap fire kisses that get used. So they do find themselves a pick off on the side of Liquid. That could be enough to open the door. But again, they do have buyback on Invoker. Nullifier has insane value at this point because there's- oh my god, yeah. There's like the Wind Waker, there's all of the Eon Discs that you're talking about. It, it's like, it, when you get a Nullifier against like just a Necrophos or just one Eon Disc, it feels good. When you get it against like five, it, it feels like literally just the most busted item in the game. So, great pickup from Mickey. <laughs> all right, Liquid making their way towards the base again. Look at all these Eidolons. Yeah, I keep just throwing out those loosened beams, trying to clear out the creep wave. And again, this is a Luna at 72 minutes in, so pretty easy to do, but it's also very scary to approach the creeps. And at this point, I'm sure that Megas doesn't even okay. matter. Like, this is, you make this play on Liquid because it's really all you can do, but it honestly doesn't matter that much. It's going to boil down entirely to somebody getting picked off without buyback or Zai using all of his black holes and then not having one up, and then OG just literally runs down mid. It's like, yes, it looks like Liquid is ahead in this game. Yes, it looks like they have full control of this game, but all it takes is one opening for OG and they can run down mid and instantly end the game. So it, it can go either way. And this cleaning up all these creeps into four from Matu. He's in, he's looking to see if he can blow anybody up. This quickly is possible. Amar already though was looking to try to get people out. It does get extra. There it is, there's a black hole over on the three side. Perfect positioning, but it's not gonna be limited. There it is. Second black hole is gonna be able to grab the little takedown. Don't take down your own. You're going to have to buy back immediately on the two kills. Over on to Amar, they need more damage, so they need to take down this ranking. They'll take them down once, but he's gotta go right back up again. OG looking to find the entry to go and just continue this fight, but it's so hard. They almost 
Monty kills an armor. Oh, Yogi, he goes in very, very deep. He's gonna run the Monty out of his heels. They're gonna chase him. The X comes out from BZM, though. Can they keep him alive long enough for Yogi to get back into the fountain? It's too much damage. No, they'll be able to save him just in the nick of time. But there it is. They're gonna try to drag Tyga right back out. You just think that's what Oh, that's gets the kill on Tyga. He does not have buyback. Mickey's sitting a little bit lower on the side. You're actually trying to man fight over here. On to Monty. That's gonna be another reincarnation. He's coming right back up again. Time in the place, follow up with the tornado. You're rocky, looking for the bomb to go and drop that loose and be, but they're just like missing down over on the middle east. They know that they don't have the buyback on a lot of these heroes. Media's getting dropped, just trying to push them away that star, but they call it GG. Team Liquid just absolutely obliterating OG in that last fight. It's so hard to make the right call at that point of the game. I, I like what they were doing with the sieging, I love the patience. Especially from Zai, because, like, he's the reason that that was so hard for OG, that he wasn't just like...